You're listening to the Pagan Center Podcast, bringing unique and intelligent perspective to the masses using contemporary technology, allowing for free discussion of one's personal beliefs and enlightenment of those not familiar with a particular religion. We bring to the forefront many issues that are ignored or shunned upon by mainstream religion. We discuss topics on a religious and non-religious level as they relate to our panel representing varied belief systems. Our brute honesty and candid opinion has made us one of the longest running and most popular pagan podcasts. Feel welcome to call in live or submit listener feedback via our website, pagancenteredpodcast.com. And welcome to tonight's episode of PCP, the Pagan Centered Podcast. I'm Dave. I'm Amber. I'm Brandon. And I'm Sam. I'm Scurve. Also joining us tonight are... I'm Barrett. Miles. I'm Karina. Nuria. I'm Saturn. Oh, yeah, and that's it for tonight. Um, so, uh, so I ever invited Karina on a show. Uh, Karina is of uh, the Well and Spindle Etsy shop, and we're going to get more into that and why she's here tonight after these messages. And we're actually going to have over here. You're listening to the Pagan Centered Podcast, bringing unique and intelligent perspective to the masses using contemporary technology, allowing for free discussion of one's personal right. beliefs and enlightenment of those not familiar with a particular religion. We bring to the forefront many issues that are ignored or shunned upon by mainstream religion. We discuss topics on a religious and non-religious level as they relate to our panel representing varied belief systems. Our brute honesty and candid opinion has made us one of the longest running and most popular pagan podcasts. Feel welcome to call in live or submit listener feedback via our website, pagancenteredpodcast.com. I figured since I got like four car batteries laying around, I want them charged. Okay, Amber, since this is your episode, I'm going to let you kick this off. Okay. Well, we can start with a typical meet and greet. So, you want to introduce yourself, say where you are, and what kind of things that you do. Okay. Um, I live in San Diego, California. Um, I'm part of the SCA. It's one of my newest sort of hobbies that I'm into. Um, I basically spend my time reading, crafting, and working and going to school. That's pretty much the basics of it. So, on your site, you said uh, that a little bit heathen and a little bit hoodoo? Yeah, actually, um, originally I had it modern magic for the folk lover, but a friend of mine, Rowan Pendragon, had brought, bought some things from my shop, and when she did a review on my store, she's called it, she uh, described it as a little heathen, a little hoodoo, and a whole lot of magical. And so I took that because I felt that it fit way better than modern magic for the folk lover, which was pretty terrible, and... Not very creative. <laughs> <laughs> so now, did you originally get into hoodoo and heathenry and just kind of mix them together, or did it just kind of happen together, or? No, um, I've only been into hoodoo. I got the got interested in hoodoo after joining a hedwidge group, and they were talking about some people were practicing it. So I started studying it, and it wasn't until after I got into using hoodoo that I became interested and like more into the Norse and Germanic um, pantheons because I kind of stayed away from the Norse and Germanic pantheons even though I'm mostly German and the rest of my heritage is all Northern European because it was kind of like um, I felt like it was calling me but it was too much for me to handle at that time so it wasn't until recently that I kind of just like completely dove into it and just found that it like works perfectly for me so I'm kind of like slapping myself in the face like why didn't I get into this sooner it's like fits completely with what I'm my personality and my views on things. So hoodoo came first and then the heathen stuff kind of snuck in after it. It's tricky that way. <laughs> so does it does it work well together or is it more like when you make these oils you do hoodoo and then when you do these things you do the heathenry and they're separate or do you overlap them? They kind of go together, because so, when I make my oils and my and other blends based on um, kind of as giving sort of things to the Norse gods or, or the anim- or not the animals, the creatures that I name things after and whatnot, I use um, the different herbs that I use. I base the properties off of the hoodoo perspective of these different properties. 
Because I know a lot of the times when you'll look at something, a lot of people will go straight to, like, let's say Scott Cunningham's Herbal Encyclopedia and whatever. I go to um, Cat Ironwood's Hoodoo Herb and Root Magic. And a lot of the times the different things are the same, but there's different... They give more options on different things to use that I don't usually see in practices with other people. And um, even though, it, like, Hoodoo is African American folk magic, it has a European influence, and it also has Native American influence. So I like to have, like, this... I use those influences better because it's, like, this well-rounded sort of... Does that make any sense? I think I'm rambling again. I warned you about that. That's but, all right! Um, no. That's all right! You're doing really well! Don't no, worry I get about it. it. So I get it. With my heathen sort of path, I view the gods and everything as more of kin instead of, like, something to be worshipped and to give offerings to and whatnot. And hoodoo is a magical practice. It isn't, like, a path or anything. It's not, like, a religion or spirituality, even though a lot of times there's different practices. They'll say you need to chant this psalm over this or whatnot. And they'll talk about using different things connected to Christianity. But you can take and give or, like, give and take of little sort of things and mix them together. So I haven't really had an issue with it yet. But I hope bringing it up now doesn't create an issue later for me that I'm going to run into. <laughs> <laughs> now that you have, of course it will. That's great. <laughs> It'll be about two or three months. Fabulous. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. <laughs> so have you caught any slack from either the, the, heathen, the traditional heathen people or the hoodoo people from mixing them or not doing strictly either one or the other? No, not really, because I, there's people who are more eclectic than I am, and I try when I make certain, like, hoodoo products and everything, I try to be as traditional as possible, find the correct ingredients for things, I won't make a lot of things because I don't know the recipes for it, I'm not going to just make them up like some people do, and, like, when I make my own oils, I make it up from, like, what I'm sort of trying to bring into it, and what certain herbs and whatnot are sacred to these gods and goddesses that I'm trying to make something in honor of. But when I'm making, like, a hoodoo mm -hmm. sort of product, there's, like, actual recipes for a lot of these different things. And there, it changes as you go, like, regionally, supposedly, but there's some things like um, Van Van Oil, and it has to have, like, these five different ingredients. So you have to, so, do you get what I'm saying? So you have to, there's these recipes that you have to follow. So when I do hoodoo stuff, I try to be traditional. I try to keep with it as much as I can, and that's why I don't practice most of it. Not most of it, but some of it, and that's why I don't create a lot of different things, because I don't want to just make it up and give it the name that it has in Hoodoo. But I haven't had any issues with heathen people, mainly because there's not really any heathens here in San Diego that I can find. And then online, I don't really discuss spiritual things with them, other than like maybe talking about a certain god or goddess, but they never really ask me about anything else. And there's no real Hoodoo practitioners here either. It's starting to become more common, like more people are starting to get into it, but they're not really traditional practitioners. So they're all pretty eclectic, and they don't really have an issue. But I'm sure there's some people that are looking at what I do and kind of, like, shaking their heads, like, why are you sort of, um, like, messing with this sort of thing? Do you know what I'm saying? Why are you changing it to fit your purposes? But nobody's ever come straight to me and said anything, so. Hmm. Well, at least you don't have a lot of conflict going on, so that's a good thing. Yeah. So what about when it comes to family and friends and, and things like that, were you raised in an alternative path? Have they accepted it if you weren't? My parents were both kind of, they're punk rockers when I was born, and so they're just like really like open and liberal and kind of like funky, and um, they let us basically, my mom basically gave us the freedom to choose what we wanted to do. So when I was nine, I started going to different churches, studying different religions, because I felt a call for something that I needed to get in touch with, sort of like trying to get in touch with like the divine or something. And then, so I went to a bunch of different churches, and she allowed that to happen for me, and both me and my sister. So we both have gone to various Christian churches, and um, we've kind of, like, Mormon, Jehovah's Witness, Jewish sort of thing. We've gone into all of that. And her allowing us to do that made me really interested in religion. Now I'm a relig religious studies major. But when I was around 12, I started um, sort of seeing things differently, and I came to my mom and talked to her about it. And she told me, like, hey, you're, a lot of the things that you're seeing are, like, a lot of the things that you're getting into is what I'm into. And she told me that she was into witchcraft, and she was following a Celtic path, and that her fiancé at the time was uh, studying Druid practices. So she got me my first book, and it was, <laughs> like, Teen Witch or something by Silver Ravenwolf. And that just kind of, like, <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay, she didn't know better. <laughs> that's okay. And that's how I got started. You're going to have to begin somewhere. Yeah, that's true. That's really but, um, cool, though, that, uh, the, that she was accepting. 
Yeah. My mom and my dad are pretty open. My dad joked, like, do you keep goat's heads under your bed or something? They're divorced, so he wasn't really around. My dad's never been super proud of my life. But um, his family is really, like, Baptist and Catholic, so they don't really talk to me about stuff. But my mom's family is just kind of like, um, like my grandma and stuff, she'll ask me a lot of questions. Because she's really uh, into different, practicing different faiths as well. So I haven't really had an issue with family, basically because we just don't talk about it. So, and I don't really push my stuff on people, and I don't wear a lot of, like, pagan-related jewelry other than, like, my rune necklace and whatnot, so it's not really, yeah, something that's brought up. I haven't had any issues with the family yet. Now, you Friend. said they ask questions. Like, do they learn off of you, or is it more of, like, the curiosity, what is this kind of question? Well, my grandma will be like, she said something like, are you a witch trainer? And I'm like, well, here's what I'm into. <laughs> and she's like, oh, okay. And she just... I don't think she likes the term witch or something, but she's she's practiced some. She's studied, or not studied. She's been into like alien things, and she's. Uh, my mom said she's studied Italian witchcraft and stuff before. My grandma's super into like everything, so she'll ask questions like, "What are you practicing?" And like, she'll yeah, she'll ask basically like for me to explain it. But then she's just kind of like, "Oh, cool." Afterwards, she's not like, "Oh, okay, well that sounds kind of like devil worship or something." <laughs> she's very like chill like that when it comes to spiritual stuff. And my opa is just my opa. Okay, Oma is grandma in German and opa is grandpa. So my opa is just kind of like, oh, whatever you want to do. He doesn't really care. He's married to an ex-hippie, so I think he's just used to being around, like, alternative spirituality people. Should I keep talking? <laughs> <laughs> like, awkward silence. These pauses happen occasionally. Everyone's yeah, keeping that's thought. Okay. Yeah. And one of the has to fill the silence, so I'll just keep playing, so you need to... Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. Amber, Amber's got crickets we use sometimes to fill the silence. Yeah. They're cute. And then she eats them. I do not. <laughs> I don't have any chocolate to cover them in. <laughs> you can roast them and put them with cayenne. So what way. kind of things do you make, Katrina? Or Karina? Um, I, I make a lot of things, and I don't... Oh, some of the things I make, I don't even put on my Etsy just because I'm tired of finding um, containers and stuff for them. I make room spray smudge sticks out of uh, fresh herbs from my garden, incenses, milk baths, salt baths, baths, a lot of bath and body products with like a magical sort of uh, influence on them. Like I'll choose the herbs and whatnot based on medicinal properties as well as magical. Um, and then I sell a lot of like supplies too for people. Like, if you need camphor for something, or herbs, or some certain roots and whatnot. Um, but I started selling my stuff on Etsy with Scandinavian yarn poppets. Because I had learned that uh, my grandpa took me to a summer camp, a Victorian summer camp. And I had learned it there, and then when I did the research, I found out that it has roots in, like, this Scandinavian, like, like it's a, was originally a toy, it turned into, like, this poppet. And I've seen other people make poppets before, and I kind of like the idea of the yarn poppet, because you can stick stuff in all the various little places sticking out of it, so it happened to stuff it and sew it together. And, yeah, I make brooches, jewelry, all sorts of weird little things, and I sell some vintage items on there, too, when I find cool stuff at, like, different stores down here. Oh, cool. Do you ever use, uh, runes in any of your things? For the heathen influence? When I, um, first started making stuff, I'd make, like, protection bottles, and I'd put different runes on them. And I was um, burning runes into different things to put on my things, on my some of my products. But I kept burning myself, so I stopped that. Because um, I don't really think somebody wants something that I was, like, cussing over because I burned myself so bad. Um, I have, don't really put runes on a lot of stuff I make anymore. Um, I don't really know why. I was thinking of making different oils and stuff and then, give, like, naming them after runes and kind of basing the herbs and stuff used on the characteristics of that rune and what it means for but I haven't really... I use runes in my own personal practice, but not in my the stuff that I sell, really. Because there's not many people actually... When I've tried to sell, like, heathen-related stuff, it just doesn't really sell well. It doesn't really... So then it sits there, and then eventually I end up giving it away because I don't want it to go bad, and I don't want to sell somebody something that has been sitting on my shelf for, like, four months or something. Because herbs, in my perspective, are only good for a year, so I don't want to sell somebody something that they have to use immediately. Do you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Yeah. Okay. So what were the first things that you made? 
For my Etsy site or just in Pagany general? Mm, both. For my Etsy site, when I first opened it, it was just Scandinavian yarn poppets. Because I was making them at a friend's house and she had just opened an Etsy site and she said, oh, you should sell those on Etsy. And um, my mom's really super crafty. A lot of the stuff I make, I've learned from her. So we've grown up doing like crafty little things. We've made like little wreaths and fairy uh, like little nests and whatnot. And um, yeah, there's tons of weird, like, I think she has, uh, what's, I, I forget the author. I think her name's Poppy or something. She has this witchcrafting book that we did a lot of things out of there too. So really I can like thank my shop based on my mom sort of like growing up and working with everything. And I guess like a lot of stuff we did too, you could say put a pig and spin on sort of thing. Um, like blowing things out of eggs and using those, I guess you could say for a star or something. But there's nothing really that I can like pinpoint to talk about that I made before I opened my shop and everything. Just kind of like crafting all the time. My mom's really into just we're like when the, basically when we spend time with her, we're crafting something. And there was a comment in the chat room. Lava Kitty asked, "Why only a year with the herbs?" Because um, it's supposed to. Be, well, it doesn't. Not everybody views it that way. But I see it as if you're going to ingest the herbs. Too, some of them, like I sell, and people use them as teas and whatnot. Um, if they're all herbs are supposed to. They use. They lose their like medicinal properties starting after a year, and the think about it, when you cut something off and you dry it, how long do you think that the spirit and the energy is going to stay in that plant? A lot of times they'll say it's a year. I'm sure like it depends on your personal view, but I only keep things for a year because I feel like the, after time it starts to just become a thing and not really have the same energy that it had when it was growing. It's kind of like losing its magical property. It's vitality. Yeah, that's what I mean. Vitality. And then, like, if you're going to use it for medicinal purposes, too, you really shouldn't be keeping them for years and years and years, because I don't... I mean, I don't know if they really would still work after a couple of years, but I just feel like it's not as potent or whatever to use it for that as well. That makes sense. I know I have a lot of things where eh, there's some that I'll keep, especially, like, the resins I'll keep, but when it comes to oh, okay. a lot of my rose parts and... Um, some of the teas that, eh, no, clean them out every now and then and just get new stuff. So, yeah, I can understand that. Unless you're keeping it for, like, I keep rose thorns for a long time, because I'll use them in, like, a witch bottle or something, because it's more like the symbolism of it, too, like, seeing the spikes and everything and thinking about that. So that's sort of different. So I guess, like, and then, like you said, the resins and stuff, I do actually keep those longer. I didn't really think about that one. So where did you learn to make all of this? Was this a learning from books? Did you have people? Mom, probably. Yeah, I learned some of it from my mom, like the crafting stuff. But the herbal things, I, um, I'm, I'm a huge book nerd. So like I'm constantly reading and everything. So I learned stuff from books, but it's mostly trial and error. Because I'm sensitive to the energies and plants more than I am to other things. So, like, I'll use something, like, you know, you'll look up a recipe for something, like, oh, I need a quick goddess oil or something, and a lot of people will go online nowadays, and they'll say, okay, well, I have these four different plants. Well, with me, I'll take the four different plants, and I'm like, no, the energy is conflicting between these two. I don't know why somebody put these together just because, and it's usually just because they're listed as having the same properties. Like, lavender is good for love, and so is rose, and they'll just, like, throw it together in every single thing. I feel, when I use stuff, I use trial and error, like, I'll... I'll hold things in my hand before I use them and see what the energy is like if it's conflicting with other things. And I'll, uh, this is after uh, looking at their properties first, or unless I already know them. And then also making things and trying it before I give it to other people or selling it. Like I'll make a bottle for myself and see if it's like really blending well this way that I had intended it to be. I also go into the medicinal things as well sometimes with my oils because I'm really trying to follow that path as well. I used to work in a garden center, so I'm a book nerd and a plant nerd, so... So, so learning from books, trial and error, and then obviously online and talking to other people as well. So what do you find yourself going through a lot of? The most herbs I go through? Like, what is... Um, uh, what do you make the most of? Well, the, the most of the stuff that I make is oils, and I go through a crap ton of lavender. Just because I love lavender, and I go through dragon's blood really quickly because I feel like I'm constantly bringing that. That's like my go-to sort of thing to cleanse out everything and empower me when I'm going to do some work. 
But mint is my substituter, but not a lot of people will say that they go to rosemary because Cunningham said that rosemary is basically the, the best substitute. Or mint is it for me. And I think it's a German thing because I've talked to other Germans who are practicing witchcraft and mint is their thing to do to go to too. And then the Appalachians, and I talked to some people of German descent there online and read books about them too, and mint is their thing too. So mint, lavender, and dragon's blood are the first things I always run out of. And I use those on a lot of the things I create too, so... I hope you like lavender and mint if you're buying my stuff. I don't know. I've worked with rosemary, and I can't see rosemary personally being a good substitute. Or mint? I can agree with mint. Yeah. Rosemary? Like not so much. Yeah. I don't know if that was his own choice, Cunningham saying, his own personal thing, or if he got it from something else. But now it's like become common for people to just associate rosemary with, uh, not common, but I talk to a lot of people, usually they've read Cunningham's book if they're getting into herbal things in this community, do you know what I mean? So they all have this thing that rosemary is it, and I'm like, no, it doesn't fit right. <laughs> Use mint instead. Kim would argue with you, Amber. I know Kim would argue with me. That's because she reuses rosemary for everything. Do you have a broken bone? Make a rosemary poultice. <laughs> uh, you had a comment in the chat room. Where do you get your supplies from? Um, different places, because it depends on what I'm looking for. I really, really try hard to be organic and natural, just because I feel like a lot of people are super sensitive these days, and especially if I'm going to use something on my skin, I'm extremely sensitive. I can't even wash my face with soap. That's how sensitive I am. I have to use hot water. So I go to, um, I always mix up. It's either Rose Mountain or Mountain Rose Herbs. I get a lot of things from them. And then um, I have to find, depending on what it is, I have to go to various suppliers and, like, get little things from them. So I can't always find what I'm looking for through Rose Mountain. But I love Rose Mountain. They have a great selection. All their stuff is, like, really nice. And you can just feel, like, that it's fresher from them. I think they're in um, Oregon, too. And they do, like, herbal classes and stuff. Everyone should check out their site. It's fantastic. They have tons of stuff to offer. What's their website? It's like either rosemountain.herbs.org or something of that nature. I have to, I'm on my mom's computer, so I don't really know how to get to her things through here. Well, if you want, just give me, um, by the end of the episode, um, every books you go over, websites, just send them to me in an email, and we'll throw them in the show notes. Oh, okay, cool. I can do that. So, I did... And I, I let the crew know that I purchased some of your oils from your Etsy site. And I'm always hesitant when I buy other people's products because I'm so picky. And I'm, I'm horribly jaded against the rest of the community. But I have to say I was really, really impressed with Aww. both of them. <laughs> awesome. Uh, the... um. The one for, for breaking curses. I can't pronounce them for the life of me, and they're far, far away from me now, so I can't read them. Vithar's the Vengeance? One, yep, the Vith, the Was it the Vithgar's Vengeance, you said? Vithar's something, yeah. Vithar's, Vithar. I pronounce everything wrong, too. So. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't... It feels different than I would expect it to smell. Um. Like, it feels very spicy to me. But when you had labeled it, it hit, it packs with a punch. It definitely does. And <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what was in the area, but it was just something that was not pleasant. And everything in the house was all of a sudden lovely. Oh, awesome. And I'm not used to most people being able to make something that I can use like that. So, in my book, that's like, oh my god, you're awesome! Hey, trial and error, <laughs> that's how I got them. <laughs> and that was the Frau Holda? Yeah. I'm really connected with her. I haven't made anything for her except till this last, um, till within this last year, because I kind of, like, didn't want to piss her off in a way, because I'm really connected with her, and she's one of those people that, not one of those people, one of those sort of, she's a regional Germanic deity, but basically okay. she's connected with Rafe. She's one of people that I didn't want to, not people, deities, I didn't want to, like, piss off by making the wrong thing. Like, I usually don't feel that way with different gods and goddesses, but I'm so connected with her that I'm like, I have to make this perfect, you know? 
Yeah, so. and it was absolutely amazing. I felt it well, before I opened my P.O. box. Oh, cool. That's cool. <laughs> I knew the day that I got it. So, yeah, I, I can now say from a personal experience that I would highly recommend your stuff. I shall I'll do so when I meet other people and pass your site along. Oh, thank you. So, speaking of feedback, do you get a lot of feedback from other people that you sell to? Generally speaking? Yeah, on Etsy, I'll get a lot of feedback. And I'll have people who add me because they'll find me, like, because they'll get my address off the thing. And they'll come and find me on Facebook. and Or they'll find me through my Facebook fan page. And they're like, I had to add you. Like, your things were so great, blah, blah, blah. Or people who will, who are already on my Facebook fan page and they'll, or on my face, regular Facebook. And they'll see me post stuff. And then they're like, hey, well, and then they'll buy things. Like, oh, my gosh, you, oh. you talk about things. But when I finally bought it, I was like, holy crap. So I get it, most, almost all the feedback I've gotten has been really good. Except for like when something's broken in the mail, that's pretty much the only bad feedback I get. So I get good feedback online. Um, I've donated stuff to the, my community and everything here in San Diego. The feedback isn't the same. They're kind of like, oh, cool. But and it wasn't until this last um, Belting in the Park, which is a celebration put on by Covenant of the Goddess here, that I had, when people were introduced me to their friends, they're like, oh, this is Karina. She makes really cool handmade witchy stuff. Oh, and I'm like, oh. Like, people are actually starting to, like, recognize me and connect me with my shop because beforehand when I do donations I'd, sit, I'd put in the slip and said buy the lawn spindle and people are kind of like silent and like buy Karina but I'm so shy and quiet that nobody really knew me so the person would have to like point at me that girl over there and they're like oh okay that girl and then but now it's becoming like I'm getting no more for my stuff sort of thing, I guess and I'm there was a comment in the chat room. Is there any books you recommend for people who want to know more about hoodoo? And where do you see yourself going with your business? Well, the first book you should get is um, um, Hoodoo Urban Root Magic by Kat Ironwood. It's spelled like Yerwanwood, like Y-R-O-N-E-W-O-D or something. I started with her and... Yeah. Something. I think yeah, she sure Um, I started with that, and then like learning that she'll like just tell you about different things and start something. The connections start starting between different herbs and everything. So, um, so in a sense, you basically use herbs and different um, personal concerns and all that different things. And hoodoo, that's the first thing you should be looking at more than like a. And the second step you should be taking is like going and looking at the culture. There's a bunch of different um, books you can get. I just got some in the mail. I think Jambalaya. I forgot the author. Is supposed to be really good. Um, Ray Marlboro, I don't know, he's not really accepted by traditional hoodoo practitioners, but he's a good one. I just got his book, and the first part is kind of crappy, but it's like talking about how to set up your altar and everything. But his charms and his formulas for things are interesting. A lot of the books for hoodoo are really hard to get or cost like hundreds of dollars because they're like Hyatt's books. He's supposed to be like the top person. His books are like super expensive. You can find a lot of information on LuckyMojo.com. Kat has posted a ton of free information on there. Um, at the end of uh, Amber, I'll send you some um, links to the books I um, other books I have, but I'm not in my room, so I can't grab them to get the okay. titles. I'm terrible for remembering titles and authors. I just like remember is that book, and I'll remember the picture on the cover or something. But yeah, you can. Um, there's different things online. The one book I, that I told that you should not get is the the um, what is it? Something about sticks and bones, and the person's name is like Star or something. I heard that's really basically her own interpretation of hoodoo, and it's really Wiccan influenced. So it's not really close to traditional hoodoo at all. I don't know if anybody's heard of that book. Some um, root sticks and bones or something. Yeah, I'm not helping by not having correct names. <laughs> I haven't heard anything offhand, but that doesn't mean anything. So I'm horrible with memory names. Hoodoo books. Um, where do you see yourself going with your business? Oh, okay. Um, I don't know. It's helped me grow spiritually and everything, making stuff for other people because trial and error, testing things, opening myself up and being able to purchase different things to work with. But I don't know. I, I, like most people's dreams I talk about when in pagan community, like tons of people want to open a store eventually. And that seems like a really cool thing that I'd want to do eventually is to open a store somewhere. But with this sort of... Uh, what is it? What do you want to say? This economy and everything—I don't see that happening anytime soon. I see myself basically doing 
regular job and doing this on the side for now. Maybe I'll open up a better website if I can figure out how to. I'm crap with computers, so I have to find somebody that I can, who pays, who will be paid cheaply to help me make with web design and whatnot. Um, but it'd be cool, like if eventually I could open a store and work with other people, because I want to make like a handmade store, not somewhere you go into, or mostly by places I go in now. It's basically some books, some herbs, and then everything else is mass produced, like statuary and stuff that I can't afford. Most people in my community can't afford. But I don't really want in my house because it's just so, like, not fake, but well, yeah, it's fake. But it's just so mass produced, it doesn't really have any real energy with it. Or made by, like, humongous companies that don't put any of, like, anything into their products. I want to make a store. If I'm going to have a store, I want it to be a store where everything is made by the people who work there. I want it to be, like, a. So I don't know if that's ever going to happen, but that could be part of one of my dreams. If not, I'm content with just doing stuff from home in my spare time on Etsy or online. So have you noticed the sales from Etsy? Go ahead, Miles. Okay. <clears throat> um, from looking at some books on Hoodoo, um, yeah. the book that you advised against was called Sticks, Stones, Roots, and Bones by yeah. Stephanie Rose Bird, correct? Okay. Yes. I'll take your word that that's not as good. How about these three? There is Hoodoo Herb and Root Magic by um, Tat Aaron Road. That is approved, that's, I that's imagine. That's the first book I think you should get if it's you're going to get a green cover. Okay. Yeah. That's then the there is okay the Voodoo Hoodoo Spell Book by Denise Alvarado. I haven't read that one, but I haven't... I've heard, like, mixed reviews on it from different practitioners. Some will say that she's not super traditional, and some will say... I think the, the, the title is misleading to her. I've heard that she doesn't... She explains the difference between hoodoo and voodoo when you first open it, and it's... Because hoodoo and voodoo are different. They're not the same thing. And so I think the title of the book kind of throws people off, and then when you get into it, I think the author yeah. um, explains the difference and, and actually then, goes into hoodoo. And then the third one with what appears to me as a really dubious title, is Root Work Using the Folk Magic of Black America for Love, Money, and Success by Tiana Lee McQuillar. That sounds like one of the... That sounds very specific. Let me find that real quick. I think that's actually a good one. I think I just actually ordered is that it? one. Okay. Ah. Uh, what is and it called? It's called Root Work Using the Folk Magic of Black America for Love, Money, and Success by Tiana Lee McQuillar, M C Q U I L L A R. Yep, I just heard, I've heard fantastic things about this book. I just ah, actually got this one good. in the mail. So I went, this is one I just got that, that I haven't read yet, so I can't tell you if it's good, but, but I've heard good things about right. it enough to buy it. And what, <clears throat> um, I'm curious as well, in your definition, what is the difference between hoodoo and voodoo? Okay. In layman's terms. I don't know too much about voodoo. I know it is a spiritual practice. It's you can, I guess you could call it a religion. There's certain things that go along with it. Who in it? So you have like your own different go orishas, I think they're called. You have your different gods, and goddesses, sort of thing. That's the orishas, I think, are the, the names of their what they call their gods and goddesses. They have real spiritual practices, real rituals, real everything. Hoodoo is African American folk magic with a lot of European influence and Native American influence. It changes as you go to different regions. Like um, I know, I think it's. Georgia or something has more of a um, uh, Native American influence on hoodoo, and there's also family practices, but it's a lot of people who practice it are African Americans, and a lot of African Americans in the South are Christians. So it's basically just a magical practice that you can add on to your religion. It is not a religion in itself, and there's not a lot of, same, there's a lot of different things that are connected with each other because of the voodoo working in the same area and everything, but it's not the same thing. Voodoo is a actual practice, and in my opinion, hoodoo is just magical, uh, folk magic that you can basically, like, latch on to something else. I know it's more traditional if you use it, if you're, 
I'm not saying you have to be a Christian. It's more traditional to be Christian and use it. But those are the majority of people using it are Christians. Um, and this is their life. That's why there's like different, they'll chant different parts of the Bible with it and everything for different rituals and whatnot. And there's different taboo things. But um, it's different. It's more open to people. I think that's why it's becoming popular too, who do, because people can take it and add it to their own sort of little, uh, their own thing that they're doing. Does that answer the question okay? <laughs> It does, actually. Um, let's see. As I'm vaguely familiar with voodoo, and I'm vaguely, vaguely familiar with heathen practices, um, I can see comparisons. This is, of course, referring to the voodoo orishas. I can see comparisons between, example, Shango and Thor, and Odin and Hapa Legba. But it sounds to me like Hoodoo is much more a hands in the dirt, fly by the eat of your pants, root cunning kind of practice, as opposed to any religious protocol. Yeah. Because there's no real... Cool. I mean, there's, there's, like, restrictions on some things, but, you, you know, like, you'll say in different, like, say in Wicca you can't harm anybody or I'll come back to you three times. There's no real rules like that in hoodoo because it's not a religious practice compared to, like, voodoo right. or if you're practicing yeah. with any heathen practices. So it is kind of just like you can pick it up and go, and it's just, I don't know, it's there for the taking, well, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> if it works, you don't have to really, it. like, dedicate yourself to it. Yeah. I get it. Okay. This is fun. <laughs> um, how do you combine, if they are something that you can combine, um, hoodoo crafting with heathenry practice? Is it just that the two things... Um, just happen to not conflict, and they're both cool. Or is there a is there a definable synthesis that you can identify? Okay, I couldn't hear all of that. I heard basically, is there a conflicting thing between hoodoo and heathenry? Is that what you said? Because my computer was kind of like okay. Well, yeah, that so I don't going see rats, the rats, rats, rats. Hmm? Yeah. Um, there's no. Real, I haven't had any conflicting issues with hoodoo and heathenry. Um, sometimes when I look up like a herb sacred to a certain god or goddess, it has a that like works with their person, like their characteristics, sort of thing. Do you know what I'm saying? Like the the natural properties. If you look at it from a European perspective, don't always aren't the same in hoodoo because sometimes in hoodoo the herbs uh, are used for something else. But that's the only like little thing that I've ever had an issue with, like, looking at... Because I try to stick with, like, using herbs based on the hoodoo perspective of the herb. And then when I look it up, when I, like, try to do research to see uh, is what herbs are sacred to a certain god or goddess, it's not always... That's the only issue I've had, is that it might not... The herbs used are not really workable. So I just blend them together and eventually... Because the herbs and oils and stuff that I'm making for my gods and goddesses are my own thing anyway. It's not a recipe I'm going off of, so there's no real issue there. People know that it's my own blend, right. so it's not like... But I've never in my practice or anything, there's never been any conflict, really. Thor hasn't come down and said, like, how dare you use... No, so it hasn't really... <laughs> yeah, this is not good, this is not right. Cut this crap out now. Good. Going off of that, there was a comment in the chat room that asked, what do you do when you're about to work on somebody's product? that it's amazing that you don't cross-contaminate energy from project to project. Hmm, okay. Well, I'm constantly cleansing, and I, I do work on certain projects at the same time, but I work on them in different areas of my room. Like, I have a desk next to my computer desk that I'll make certain things, and then I have a, an, it's a... I guess you could call it an altar of sorts where I make everybody's stuff, but I'm always working... Or make everybody's... Make the stuff that I'm selling, but when I'm working on something, like, if I make, like, a... It usually has the same sort of... I'll make something and finish it first and then get rid of it. Not get rid of it, but I'll set it aside before I work on something else. So I'm not making, like, love stuff right next to, like, 
something to make somebody get out of your life or whatever. Um, I focus on one thing and I make it. The only thing that I don't finish is like labeling them or something later. And um, so there's no really like overlap of energy. Because my room, because I make most of the stuff in my room or in my home, like in my kitchen or something. Because my room is two rooms put in one, so like half of it is like where I reside and the other half is like where I keep all my stuff and everything and I have my little working spaces and whatnot. So it, I feel like my energy is already in there and obviously my moods change and everything so there's all these different things in there already at play so it's not really, if you're getting something from me it's kind of like my energy is in it anyway sort of thing. Before I send it to you I always try and like like mentally sort of, not mentally but like do this little thing where I cut it off so you're not getting something that's like has my juju all over it but obviously I made it so it's partially there but not, when I make stuff I don't feel like there's like an overlap of whatnot. Because all the stuff that's bringing in is probably in your house anyway. Like, say you're bringing in the love. Okay, wait. I'm losing track of my thoughts, and it's not going to be all right. There's no real... Okay, basically, I don't feel like there's an overlap thing. I'll make something, and then put it aside and work on something else. I'm constantly cleansing my room and everything, so I don't feel like there's residual ick that would influence something else. If that makes... I don't know. Okay, that totally... I, I don't think I answered that question properly, but I can't it's really okay. think of how to answer it the right way. No. My, my thoughts don't always translate right out, so I'm like, uh, I don't really know how to explain how. I know that silence like gets a, you, don't it? Like an offer a comparison, though, it's like how to use the kitchen counter for um, rinsing out ground beef and onions and things, making a meatloaf, and you clean the counter so that you can work on the blueberry pie. There is no element of the meatloaf in the blueberry pie because you have cleaned your working area and washed your hands. There you go. That's right? kind of, yeah. Yeah, that's basically ah. it. Okay. <laughs> and just another thing about like residual energy being left over from working on something, but I don't really feel like it's just like, like sitting there and getting stagnant or something when I've finished something. I feel like it's like when it's done, it's completed and it's worked on. Like it's done. Like, here's an idea, like, okay, in some myths they'll say, like, they'll make a magical sword, and once it's completed, it has its own destiny, it has its own, not soul, but, like, something of that nature, and then there's nothing left of it anywhere else. So when I make something, and once it's complete, it's own, it's, its own little entity sort of thing. That's how I kind of see my, personally, I see my things, and well, and things in general once they've been completed. So it doesn't feel like it's leaving behind anything. Once I finish making it, it's done with, and it's moved over. It's not, like... What I've, my energy they put into it isn't sitting there like jumping around or running around hiding behind like a clock or something waiting until I work on something else and it's going to jump in and contaminate it or whatever I'm sorry the mental image I got is little pieces of your aura coming off and making little imps and just like waiting and yes, looming and trying to pounce on things well. oh, I'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> oh yay yeah that's cute. Okay, so <laughs> we so we plug around in your hoodoo library. Let's dig around in your heathenry library. What heathenry books do you recommend? Um, anything by Edred Thorson. Anything by okay, I'm gonna totally screw up. <laughs> Sorry, Kvendolf. <laughs> that's how you say it? Gunderson. And I found a lot of good things online mm -hmm. too. I know there's some magazines that I'm trying to find so I can back order them. Um. But basically, if you're going to get into it, read R. Traw, because I read it, and I was, I had already read, like, Norse mythology books and everything beforehand, and I had already looked on stuff online and talked to some heathens online, but after reading that book, it puts things in a better perspective, and it first starts out talking about the history of the Norse people, it talks about Vikings and different things and how we found out, whatever, so I love that it gives a historical background first, because I'm a history nerd, um, so it starts off with that, and then it goes into the gods and goddesses, and the way he describes them and everything kind of like makes you more connected with them. And I think, I don't know if either of them, the Elves, Whites, and Trolls book is fantastic. I forgot the author because I, yeah, I always forget authors. I just like remember what's in the book and that's pretty much it. Um, Elves, Whites, and Trolls is a great book. Um, R. Troth. Just get picking up a book on basically on Norse mythology and starting with that is a great start because then you get to know the stories and everything behind the different gods and goddesses and then later you can form a connection with them if you so des if you decide to. Because you get to know their personality and characteristics through the stories told about them. Um, and there should be. There's some more books, but I don't have that many heathen books. 
I basically had talked to other heathens online you know, about their own personal practices. How a Troth is a good book, I know it. And Hell's Whites and Trolls by... I'm going to make an attempt <laughs> that his first name is pronounced Kiedolf. It's, it's spelled K-V-E-L-D-U-L-F. Kendolf or something, His I name, think it is. Kendolf. Oh, let's just call him Gandalf. Okay. okay. Gandarson. <laughs> Gandarson. He just became Gandalf, so there, I hope he's used to that. <laughs> he also wrote Our Troth, which is a really good book in two volumes. Yeah. Um, it wasn't available for a long time, because it went out, like, it's the first print that they did sold out really quickly, so now that it's available yeah. again, I think everyone can go ahead and get in. It's not that expensive. The book is humongous. I think it's like 20-something bucks, but it's like you can knock somebody out with that book, so <laughs> it's worth it. 26 on Amazon, yeah. And then um, Amazon also recommends, I'm kind of pumping them for book titles, as you mentioned them on here. I also mention Essential... Why not? As a true Walking the Path of the Norse... Paganism by Diana Paxson. Yeah, I don't know she's if you know that book or not. Hmm? I, I haven't read the book, but I've heard about the author, and she's supposed to be really good. But there's some people who are, I don't know if they're more traditional or more like super reconstructionist, like must stick to whatever. They don't. Not all of them yeah. really kind of are. They're they're iffy on her because I think they feel like she's influenced or not influenced. Oh. Added some new concepts, not new concepts, but like more new age concepts. Ooh. But a lot, of, most of the time, when I hear people talk about her, it's good things. I just haven't really well, read anything. I know her. She's also a, f a fantasy fiction author, which might influence the way that people interpret her work. And she's not an essential Norse historian. Anything she writes, um, um, fiction and fantasy novels as. As I'm sure I know her from, as well as these books on Asatru and Heathenry. But anyway, okay. Okay, wait, I'm lost. I would, would just. I haven't read anything by her, That's so okay. I, I don't want to touch it. I am her. as well. It's okay. I'm like rambling. I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm rambling. Fear not. Ad happens to all of us. It's alright. It does! Yay! <laughs> the majority of the videos I make are like me rambling. I'll start off with one topic and then end up like talking about unicorns or something when I was talking about like politics or something to begin with. So, yeah, anyway. You have a blog anywhere? I have a YouTube channel that I make some videos oh, on. Do you? Yeah. I think one of the questions that Nifty Amber cool. was going up was going to be about that. Yep, so, I just we can just go into that now. Okay. Yeah. Um, I do have a YouTube channel. I started it mainly for, like, selfish reasons, because I had, like, social anxiety issues, and I get really nervous around people, and I didn't, it wasn't until recently that I'd been talking to someone, they're like, well, how, they had asked me different questions, like, well, you, you know, realize now that you're an empath, and I'm like, okay, I know what that is, kind of, but what is it? So I got into that, and basically, it's like, I kind of, I'm blaming my social anxiety nervousness around people on empaths sort of picking at people's crap all the time. But I had started my YouTube channel so I could pretend I was talking to somebody so that I could work on like talk people in real life sort of things. So that sounds kind of dumb. It was like beginning basically I was doing it as like a my own therapy thing. And now I absolutely love doing it because I love doing informational videos. I like talking to people. I've met people through the YouTube uh, for through people who have commented on my YouTube uh, videos and everything. And I've also been able to record and post um, classes that I've done in my own pagan community on there, and I'm j I'm really crappy with making editing videos. So if you watch them, they're kind of like all over the place, and I ramble a lot because I don't do scripts or anything. I just kind of like go in there and start talking about a topic that I know about, and then it turns into this whatever like 15 minute long ramble. <laughs> um, but I I've gotten good reactions from it because a lot of people I've um, say hey I didn't know about what the heck whites were or the difference between like how um, the connections between Germanic and Norse um, different mythological beings compared to what are more com like the more commonly known ones like fairies, like Celtic 
um, beings. Like, most people will know about Celtic beings more than, like, Norse and Germanic ones. Like, they know fairies and leprechauns and brownies and all those sort of things. But they don't know too much about trolls or whites or the Germanic Norse view on elves and whatnot, dark elves and light elves. So different things like that that I talk about, people are kind of like, I get a good reaction because they don't really, there's not too many videos on like heathen stuff really. Basically it's like people telling you to um, go buy a book. But then you'll find like endless stuff on Celtic sort of um, pantheon and mythology. So I like doing it because now I can feel like I can um, tell people more about a different path that a lot of people don't get into. I don't know why people don't get into heathen stuff. Maybe it's too, like, the gods are too... I think a lot of times people see it as, um, they connect it with, um, like, racist sort of things or whatever, or it's, like, too, like, warlike or too... Not I'm not saying it's more powerful than other paths, but that it's kind of, like, intimidating or whatever. I think that's why when I talk about things, most people don't know about different heathen stuff that I'm talking about because they've kind of, like, stayed away from that path. So making videos on it is educating people that this path is not like this scary neo-Nazi whatever racist terrible path that's like overpowering that it's really like a family it's not a family but it's like a it's a good strong path that has like a really good influence on family and whatnot and, and your community and everything just like some of the other paths do so yeah being able on YouTube is being able to share my own thoughts and everything with others as well as learning from other people their sort of perspective on things as well ramble 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 <laughs> So what came first, the classes in your home or the classes on your YouTube? Uh, YouTube, because it wasn't until like a couple months ago that I first taught a class, and it's actually at my friend Lorraine's and Nikki's house. Uh, we call her Mama Gaia, and uh, that's her little nickname. And I do, I was doing classes through the Witches of San Diego meetup here in kind of San Diego, oh yeah, the Witches of San Diego, um, that I'm a part of. And I had, the first thing that got me into teaching classes was last Sal when I was asked, I was at a meeting about preparing for this, our sound ritual, our public sound ritual. And basically I said I'd write it because I was kind of being pushed, not pushed, like, you will do this, but kind of like, hey, nudging, like, you want to read this ritual? And I'm like, no, I don't want to be in front of people. But then once I did it, I was like, wow, this is really empowering and I can do this. I can actually teach people. I don't have to, like, hide under my rock and be afraid of everyone and just keep my knowledge and whatnot, that I, little things that I know to myself. So then I ended up... Um, scheduling a class on candle magic, a class on uh, traditional incense and hoodoo powders, and a class on hoodoo oils, and I did it at her house. And I'm doing two more, I think I'm, I'm going to start in June and teach one on making poppets, one on making smudge sticks, little like basic things. I kind of wanted to start teaching more hoodoo practices to people and heathen stuff since I don't really see that. But um, yeah, that came after my YouTube. I think I started my YouTube in January, and I, my first class I think was in um, March or something. I think that was what it was. Yeah. Or February. It was in February. So it was only a month like after I started my YouTube. Oh, cool. And Dave can correct me if he's not back now. He can correct me later. But I think on the Proud Pagan Podcaster site, there's little tips here and there on starting your own thing. Um, there's enough of people there that you can ask for help with editing. So if you would eventually want to edit your videos, I'm sure there's some tons of people there that would be more than willing to lend a hand. I read an article on there about like adding music to the beginning, but I I need some to like show me. I need like my friend to come over and help me because I'm just not working it right. I'm not, not a computer person, so I look at things and it takes like half an hour to like find the right button for something. And yeah, but I found one some things to your guys' site which has been helpful, but. I'm still, I'm <laughs> just not, me and computers don't really mix. I can do, like, basic stuff. It just, it's like a foreign language that I can't understand, sort of thing. And then earlier on in the mm -hmm. chat room, there was a lava kitty that said that they'd be help, willing to help you with your website. Oh, cool. Yeah, um, lava kitty. I don't know how to get in contact with them. Should I tell them my email or tell them to contact me on Facebook or something? Um, if you wanted to do that, that works. Or if they wanted to put their email in the chat room, well, and I can uh, just give it to you, or I think if they knew them. about this Hagen-centered podcast, if they knew enough to come here to listen to you, then they can find your information on Facebook on the Hagen-centered podcast's Facebook page. Oh, okay. There's there an you go. existing connection there, right? 
Yes. Ha. Okay. See? Okay, it's already been there. Go, Miles! <laughs> Yay! Go, Lava Kitty. Okay. So, do you do. Very edge questions for you. Hmm? Go ahead, Miles. Is that. I'm doing it again. I have a really cliched question for you then. As a as a heathen and kudu and empath, I'm curious to know. Hey baby, what's your sign? Oh god. I'm <laughs> I've always grew up thinking I was a cancer. Last day of cancer before Leo. But when you do my chart, I'm actually technically a Leo. But there's so much water in my sign in my chart that it's just basically I'm just big old water mess but it's it's really funny because that being a cusp baby has really influenced my personality and everything because i'll be like look at me look at me no don't look at me don't look at me oh i'm like, nice and shiny oh no i want to be dark and gloomy like i have these like conflicting personalities and like one person sort of thing and it shows up a lot in my life even in my name my name in skin in skin like in like Scandinavian countries means pure and innocent and virginal and then in arabic speaking countries i'm a succubus a karina is the name of a succubus so i thought that was funny that i'm like cuss baby and then also like shows up in my personality and in my name and basically everything in my life i had a picture on my facebook of like my face cut in half that i decorated one side dark and one side light and it's like perfectly sort of like shows how i feel on most of the time and i'm like having conflicting thoughts and everything so i'm like oh bright and shiny oh no dark and whatever that's how i kind of always am so even with my products and stuff i'll make like one day i'll make something all like fantastic and love and light and love for people and then the next day i'm like I'm making a vengeance oil <laughs> sort of thing. I don't know. So I'm a cuss baby. Mm -hmm. I'm technically a Leo, I guess, mm -hmm. for the year it was born, but... It's like you're born awesome. to be going in two directions at once. Yeah, that's what it seems like, yeah, probably. <laughs> well, at least that means that you have a wide range of everything that you can get into. Yeah, and I get it's, it's, it shows, because, like... I'll get in a mood where I'm like, okay, I'm going into hoodoo stuff, and I'll just, like, do hoodoo for a while. And all of a sudden, I'm like, oh, I miss my Norse gods. And then I'll, like, throw myself into that for, like, a week of, like, pure studying on just Norse stuff. So I can, it opens me up to different things, and then those both lead to different things. Because once you know you study something, it always has this, like, offshoot that you, like, start going into. And it's like this endless studying for the rest of your life of all these different little things that you keep finding. Okay, ramble. Is there a person... <laughs> In your life, and what's their? I'm sorry. Is there a person in your life, and what's their practice or their thought of what you do? Is there a person in life that what? Is there a person in your life, what's their practice, if I may ask, and what do they think of what you do? Like significant it's other person? Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't really have any. Hmm? Like, I mean, um. I have people who, okay, great, uh, I don't really know how to answer this. I have people I'm close with, okay. and I have sort of relationships sort of with, but there's no, like, person that's like, this is my significant other. There's no, like, set sort of, okay, that makes it, that sounds like silly, terrible, and not how I'm trying to describe myself. There's no, yeah, there's no, I don't have a one uh, okay. partner that I'm, like, so super attached to. I'm kind of just, like, and there's no, like, okay, that makes me sound like like I'm talking about myself like I'm a whore or something. <laughs> but I don't feel like that at all. I just meant, like, there's nobody really there. But I do have people that I talk to, people that I'm yeah. kind of, like, have sort of relationships with. Okay, never mind. <laughs> like, I'm trying, so I was just curious. Hope that doesn't make you sound terrible. No, it doesn't make you sound terrible. <sighs> no, if it did, I'd be saying, it was, if it did, I'd be saying out of context award, but I think I know where you're coming from. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just not a priority for you? Um, it's just... I haven't really... Found found someone that I'm just kind of like... That really fits with what... Like, the past relationships that I've been in have just kind of been, like... Uh, like, not ended well. Or haven't really, like, been what I'm looking for. So I'm kind of just, like, sitting on it now. Just, like, waiting for somebody to sort of just show up, I guess. Because I, sometimes I'll, like, whine on my Facebook, like, oh, I'm lonely. But then again, I'm like, there's so much crap in my life that I do, like, work, school, Etsy, this and that. I'm like, I don't know how I'd fit in somebody anyway, so I'd rather just have the little things that I have now and my friends and everything. But, I mean, if I found somebody that would work well, then I'd take them up on it. But, yeah, I don't know. Hopefully <laughs> you have better luck than I do. Uh, 
Um, I meet these awesome, perfect people who are normally at least half a continent away. Yeah, that's what, that's what I hate about being on the internet. You find somebody you're like, we are meant for. Not, I don't know, okay, not creepy. That sounds creepy. But like, there's so much in common that you're like, wow, I have this super connection person, this person. Oh well, you live like on the opposite side of the planet, mm. so um, I guess it's not gonna work well. Should find somebody in my home community. Plus, but then again, when you look talking about the internet, they can be completely different from their online personality compared to their real personality. So I'm kind of like, don't really go for people. Yeah, online. we got a horror story to tell you about that one day. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> what is this black with? Okay. Huh? I never. I saw the little chat here. All I saw was Black Widow, and then you said horror story. But I guess that's they're not connected. No, but I could have used a Black Widow for that. I would have. <laughs> Sorry. <coughs> I know. Black Widows are cool. I have some on the front porch. I make sh Well. And they're well fed, and they guard their front porch. Well, black widows. Yeah. Cool. They're w and wonderful. Yeah, no, they scare me. Yeah, we're not allowed well, to have. We're not allowed you to have leave them alone. Yeah, I don't mess with them. I know where they are. I make sure they are Accounted. well protected. Yeah. But I, magically, I they are wonderful like protectors. Yeah, I don't know. I don't really like them in my garden. I kind of, like, get rid of them if I can. That sounds, because I have an eight-year-old sister, and she does not pay attention to the, the bugs back there. She'll, yeah. like, climb through something. So I don't really need her getting bitten by anything or brown recluse or any. Obviously, I can't protect her from all of it in the garden, but I'm, I go out there and try and find them first. On the relationship uh, uh, standard, I think I understand, and I went to college for quite a few years, and with classes and everything else, friendships normally satisfy 90% of what you need until, you know, whatever. But there are those times that uh, it's like, man, it'd be nice to cuddle with somebody tonight. Yeah. Get a house cat. Get what? Get a, Get a house, house cat. cat. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> if you look at Scurvy's picture, there's his cuddle buddy. Right. Second. My cat doesn't like to cuddle. I named her Ingrid, and now she's like a total little Viking meme kitty. And she just like goes out and hunts and then sits there silently. I'm like, oh, she's my little Valkyrie kitty. <laughs> Ingrid. Yeah. <laughs> now, do you do custom work with any of your oils and things? Um, I used to, and I still kind of am open to it. The only thing is that... I'm most people that you'll say, hey, can I get this? And then unless you give me a time to get it done by, I will never make it. <laughs> like, I, I'm, I'm terrible with that. I have to have a set time that has to be done with. And then also, it seems like every time somebody has asked for custom order, I've always, that's like the exact day that somebody in the family have a breakdown or something terrible happened or I have like something that prevents me from getting it done. I've done a bunch of custom orders in the past, but it's just, it's too much, um, pressure, so to speak. And then a lot of times people get too um, picky. Like they'll say, I want this, but I want to make sure this wood is from this tree, and this, and this, and this, and this, and this. And they give you basically the list of what they want, and I'm like, if you know exactly what you want, yeah, why then you don't do you it. do it yourself? Right. And then I have to like go and order these things, and it just turns into this like humongous mess sometimes. So sometimes I'll do custom orders for friends. Like I just made a Mama Gaia oil for my friend Lorray, and I made a Oya oil for her wife. And I make different things for people I know, but not really online anymore because I've had people just get, like, totally bitchy about things. And by the way, once they get it, like, okay, cool, thanks. And I'm like, I am so stressed out. I need to, like, de-stress for the next week because of the pressure you put on me. So I don't really offer them anymore. And that's kind of, like, mean to me to, like, talk about the people in the past that I've, I've done custom orders for. But it just, it's too much. Maybe, like, when I'm not in school, like, maybe this summer or something, I could, like, I'll start offering custom orders or whatever. But it's just... People get too picky with different things. If you just tell me I need an oil for this, I need incense for this, this is, or you tell me the problems you have and I can make it for you, then it's not stressful. It's when they're, like, hounding you for certain things, and then, like, you make the oil or something, and then all of a sudden they change their mind on something, and then you have to, like, throw that one away. That kind of becomes like this. It's not really worth it anymore. Do you know what I'm saying? And then the energy that I'm putting into it isn't right because I'm stressed, 
and all these different things. So, right. So order them sometimes, or offer them sometimes to people of like friends and whatnot, but not really online anymore. And I don't think it's such a. It all depends on what light you look at when you think about you know, talking about, oh, how stressful the orders were. Because yeah, you can take it and say that it's mean, but at the same time, you can also look at it and say that it's just the experience on the hecticness of why you don't create. So it's not necessarily the people in general, but just yeah, custom okay. orders and the stress. So, yeah, it's not too bad. And before I forget, when you were mentioning before about empathy, and half of us in here at least are empaths. So we understand completely <laughs> against our will, but we understand. Yeah, because well, the way I was describing it is I'll go in a situation and I'm like a sponge. And I'm just like, all of a sudden, I'll feel angry because somebody's angry, or I'll feel all these different things, and I'm like, I feel like I'm like draining people's, cr like, the crud off them. But my problem was that I'm not, I wasn't good at, like, shaking it off. Like, I'm a sponge, and then I can't, like, wring myself out or whatever. So I try, I need to, I've so been working on shielding and everything, so I go into, before I go into situations. But once you're already in a situation, and you haven't shielded already, then I'm screwed. Like, I'm just like, great, here we go, because we all try to shield, but then little things are, like, attacking you. It makes me think of, like, um, okay, this is not terrible, but the keys in, in, in Harry Potter, the Chamber of Secrets, <laughs> that chase after mm -hmm. them, that's Feel like people's like different emotions and different crap is like attacking me. Like it's chasing me. Like listen to me, take me away. And I'm like no. And yeah, it just that's how I feel with my impact thing. And then it, it, I feel, then I end up getting like more and more of was drawn because I can feel it. And then I start getting like super. I, I interpret it. People interpret it as a shy, and like that's why I was telling people it was too. But more, now it's really just like I couldn't stand to be around people because I could not deal with their stuff. Or, like, I try to talk to them, but I'm so, like, flustered from all the whatever going on that I couldn't, like, really have a conversation with them. I don't think Okay. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah. No, it does. You're like, I totally know. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it was being down here that I actually got to the point where the empathy was under control, so... Amber's very antisocial, except for in her select very social groups. Okay. If that so makes I'm, sense. When you get used to people or you understand their energy, because a lot of times, like, I wouldn't want to understand somebody else's energy because I'm not used to them or know them well enough. When you know somebody and you get around them a lot, that it's different, or the, like, depending on their energy and everything. Is that what you're saying, or, or no? <laughs> kind of. Uh, there, there's some people that the energy just works better with, but yeah. then if there are people that, if you want to say low emotional intelligence, and they're, oh my so it's like they can be the most intelligent person and they can be a very good speaker, but their emotions are just all over the place like a bouncy ball. I just can't be around them and I can't, I have to to put them over there and walk away. <laughs> so usually yeah. the people yeah. that I'm with are like the people on the podcast. It's yeah, we all have our emotional times and our whiny times and our chaotic times, but generally there's some kind of status quo there. And normally we're only around each other for a little bit of time every year. Mm -hmm. Enough just to deal with the getting. Hmm. So, have you had any experiences that have kind of, how to put it, kind of like smacked you upside the head and you thought maybe this isn't what I should be doing or made you second guess everything? Um, not really. I've had, at the beginning I had, had when I first got into it, I had been a Christian for a while. I really didn't really consider myself a Christian, but I've been, okay, so I've been going to church a lot and practicing some Christian practices. So I'd have momentary, when I was first getting into it and studying, I'm like, okay, this is right, sort of, because at first I was reading several Waver from Wolf, so I'm kind of like, this is kind of right, but not really for me. But it was better than what I was studying. But then I'd have, like, last, I was a teenager, going, obviously, 12 and 13, just hitting puberty and everything, so I'd have these things where I was like, 
okay, maybe this isn't right sort of thing. Like, I'd have something bad happen in my life or, like, an emotional breakdown or something. And I'm, I'd am i sit there and, like, pray, like, okay, Jesus and goddess and this person and this. And I'd go through, like, this list. Whoever's <laughs> out there listening to me, can somebody please help me? And then I'm like, okay, well, what is, then I'd have, like, this thing, like, maybe this path isn't right because it's, I, I shouldn't be feeling this way. But then eventually I learned, like, everybody goes to those things and it's not just because of, like, my path or whatnot. But I've never really had anything that's told me I should not be on a certain path. I've had things that told me it's time to move on to something different, but it's always sort of been connected. Like, different when I was going through... I've never considered myself Wiccan, but I've had, like, I was doing some Wiccan practices with other people, and then eventually it was like, okay, hey, Karina, you know this is not right for you. You need to move on and, like, turn into different pagan, other pagan-related paths, and then eventually... I came to animism, and I'm like, oh, okay, this fits. It's not complicated. It's not full of crap. It's just for, not crap, no offense to anybody. It's just not for me. It's not full of it, things that I have to remember or do. It's just kind of like believing their spirit and everything. And I'm like, that is how I feel. I'm like, so I've gone through, like, this different things, but there's, and eventually, like, they, they're not really working for me anymore, but I've never had anything that says, that's told me this is not the path for you because it's just it's evolving and changing to fit me better. What about the other way around? Have you had any really striking experiences that have really confirmed for you that this is what you're supposed to be doing and you're on the right path? Yeah, I've had, like, like little things. We could feel a surge of, like, power, sort of, in a sense. Like, you feel, like, that connection to the divine that you're working with. I feel like it's, like, somebody left a breadcrumb trail and you're following the breadcrumb trail and each piece of bread you pick up you're like getting nourishment from it and knowledge and you know once you get to the end of the trail that you've picked up all these different things and collected all these different things that at the end you're going to get this like not reward I'm not talking about like death is the end I'm at the end of this sort of path that you're speak on for that time period that you're going to uh, find what you're looking for sort of thing so I had like these little things like I'll be in a ritual that I've done with a group here where you just, like, felt overwhelmed. Like, we did this one thing where we danced and chanted, and I fell to the ground, and I just felt, like, sucked in and into the ground, and I just had, like, this really awesome experience. And I've done different scrying things and whatnot, where I've seen things, or I've had dreams that kind of, like, they're not really so profound where I'm, like, holy crap. Like, i just been, like, shocked out of my mind. But they're things that, like, have kind of been, um... Yeah, they kind of confirm sort of like, okay, this is what you're working on, this is what you're working towards, here's a little bit of this, here's a little bit of that, and this is what you've been striving for sort of thing. I don't know if that makes I keep saying, does that make sense? Because I'm not sure <laughs> if my rambles actually make any sense. Usually when we're silent, it's just because we're all digesting what you have to say. Okay. <laughs> I'm so, used to that. I talk for a bit and then the whole room goes quiet for like a minute. Oh, jeez. I confused everyone. But No, we like to digest. I think that a line from Harris Smith's song tends you rather well. It's as life's a journey, not a destination. Yeah. That's what I was saying, because I didn't like the little past that I was talking about. I don't mean like the end of your life is the end of that path or whatever. It's like right. I feel like there's little, tiny trails that you're taking. And those are the little things that you're supposed to be working on, sort of. So it is like this journey, this path, whatever, but I don't feel it viewed as like this one giant path sort of thing. That you're trying to get to the end, like death, where you're like, ooh, I've acquired all this knowledge. Now I get to die. <laughs> 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 you know, all this stuff, now I can't use it. Well, sod that. Yeah, yeah, great. <laughs> you're constantly using all your different things that you're learning, and you're always on a different sort of little journey that you're working on. So I'm like, I don't know. I never really think about the end, because I'm like, I'm working for knowledge now, and I know what I'm doing now, not really, like, I'm trying, I'm not, when I think of, like, I'm not trying to reach, like, a state of nirvana or something, that's just not how my path kind of is, so I never really think about, like, working, striving for the end, working on all these different things so that I can die and, like, go to some special place because I've, I'm so enlightened or something. I mean, there's no problem in believing anything like that, it just does not how... Where I really, what I'm working towards or how I'm perceiving things that I do. I'm sure it probably influences if you believe in reincarnation, your next life or something, but not, I don't really, I don't like go and do knowledge and do good deeds on purpose just because I know that I'm, I don't want to come back in the next life as like a cricket or something or whatever you believe in concerning reincarnation or if you even believe in reincarnation. I've or like, I'm not. 
I've already accepted the fact that I'm screwed when I reincarnate. So I just go <laughs> the now. <laughs> Poor Scurvy. Yeah. yeah, live fast, die young, leave a good looking corpse. How about two out of three? <laughs> <laughs> have you used oh, any have you used any animal parts in your hoodoo? Yeah. Like like bones, teeth or whatnot? Far? Yeah, I actually had this huge thing on my Facebook because I acquired some raccoon penis bones, and right. I was selling, I was selling them on my Etsy site because I didn't really have a use for them at the time. Um, and people are like, "Oh, did you get those yourself? Why do you use like?" Because I don't see a lot of people use bones and whatnot in their practices because they're like a lot of people I know who are pagan are like who are they're either vegan or like pita sort of thing or like people I do know the only things they use are like furs, which is cool, but like. There's so much more to the animal that you could be incorporating into your badge practices. So different, like the raccoon penis bone was supposed to be used as like a love amulet, and you'd give it to your girl, and she'd wear it as a necklace as a, on a red string, sort of like a. It's basically a casting a love spell on her, and also like a symbol of your love, sort of thing. Right. And there's other there's other th things you can do with it. It's also been used as a gambling charm if you uh, wrap money around it and whatnot. But um, I and I actually just ordered alligators. Um, Claws, because I'm making a mojo bag for myself, or a little grease grease bag, grease grease bag. And I'm going to be cool. offering those too. There's so many different things you can use: teeth, claws, nails, yeah. scales, flesh. You know, the bones. I'm sure I've, I've seen people sell dried chicken hearts for different hoodoo voodoo things. Okay, I'm mixing those together, but I'm sure it's used in both. And then um, it is. You're also in hoodoo. You use your personal concerns too. You use you use your urine, your menstrual blood. Your semen, um, anything, uh, vaginal fluids, your hair, your nail clippings, skin from your, uh, you use stuff from your own body too in hoodoo. I mean, a lot of people will talk to them about stuff and they're like, oh, that's vile, that's disgusting. I'm like, how is it disgusting if it comes from your yeah. own body? I don't understand. <laughs> so, I, yeah, I use animal parts and my own juju, I guess. My own hair, nail clippings and stuff and different things. I feel like I'm putting my own self into it, something that's empowering it. I'm keeping my juju on him, so to speak. So you mentioned that you have a garden early. How is it a big garden? A little tiny herb garden? Um, our the area that we live in, the ground is clay. So everything's in pots. <laughs> so we have basically I have like eight or nine rosemary bushes because that's the only thing that'll grow on the ground. Even my lavender died, and I tried. French, English, Spanish, lavender, and it didn't work. So I have things in pots. I have a lot of mint in pots. Um, I use bromelades or bromeliads, however you want to pronounce them, for protection magic. Uh, we have the rosemary. I have a couple different rose bushes. I have one rose bush that's actually in the ground, but I um, amended the soil, like amended the crap out of the soil, because I was like going to have my dang rose bush in my backyard. Um, we have honeysuckle. We have tons of ivy. I'm trying to think what else we have. We have lots of stuff. I had mugwort growing in the backyard. We have um, self-heal herb, lots of different things. They're all in pots, though, so there's only so much I can, like, harvest from them. Because when I first opened my shop, all the herbs were from my garden because I didn't know really where to buy the herbs from um, when I first started in 2008. Um, but, yeah, it's, 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 it's not a humongous garden because our backyard's really big. We have, like, a trampoline and all this other stuff for my year old sister back there. And we have some stuff in the front yard, but they're all in, like, pots. Like, a couple gallon pots for a few of them, and then, like, itty bitties that we re-get every year. Like, different annuals I have to keep rebuying after I've harvested them. Annuals come back a lot here in San Diego, though, because of our temperature. We don't really get a frost, so they keep, they'll keep coming back. So I've gotten some good things out of it. Like, the mint I have right now um, is from my garden and also my friend Stephanie's garden that she harvested back in Nebraska. I know we don't have too much of a frost down here, so we got all sorts of plants that shouldn't stay around for more than a year that are continually here. <laughs> they don't always look that great after the first year. <laughs> Some yeah. of the things like, oh, to grow this long, they're like, and you're like, this is not very pretty. It's time to go. <laughs> well, we get weird things like we have trumpet honeysuckle that's this really hot pink. And any time during the year, there are flowers, buds, and berries all at the same time. Oh, interesting. It's so weird. 
But that's just my How much do you work with food or recipes? How much do I work with food or recipes? What do you mean concerning herbs and mm. stuff? Um, uh, yeah, I use herbs I every time I. Is that what you mean? You know, things you make, you make, like things for people that are ingested, or do you work magic into the meals that you prepare? Yeah, uh, not unlike most of the stuff we do at home, just because we like cook for ourselves and we're always on the go sort of thing. But if I'm going to bring something to a ritual for like the cakes and ale or something, I'm obviously putting my own little magic into it. Like I've made crescent cakes with almonds and then the almonds and everything that go into it all have sort of different properties for what we're working with. And we're doing like a full moon ritual or whatnot. We're talking about abundance and I've used some things. Um, I just actually made a bunch of tea blends that I'm giving as part of a gift to our king and queen for um, in the SDA. And those are I made based on the flavor and also like the medicinal properties of different things too. Um, but yeah, when I make things for other people for pagan events, I do try to put like a, if I'm cooking it, I try to make it, put my own little natural things in there. Or a lot of the times I'll look up, I have a couple of like um, witchcraft recipe books for, um, doing stuff like that. I forget the authors already. But like, um, how to make cakes nail for this, or how to make this special, like, um, cider, or these special cakes, and then they'll tell you what the magic property of all the things you're putting into it in is. We don't do a lot of cooking during the summer, though, because it's, it's, it's pretty hot here. I don't know if you guys live in the south, so I feel bad for you guys, but it gets pretty damn hot here in San Diego, too, so not too much of it during the summer, but definitely during the fall and winter here. We do a lot of cooking for stuff. Magical cooking. Amber and I are both in North Carolina. Oh. Yep. I'm sorry. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> actually, actually, Amber's even more in North Carolina than I am. Actually, no, I think I'm in more than you are because I'm you're about in the middle of the state and you're just about hanging off the edge of the Atlantic Ocean, aren't you? Yeah, Pretty I think more. I'm in the Atlantic. I don't... I <laughs> <laughs> We're 70 it's miles from the strip mainland. Of land. Yeah. And a half mile from the ocean and a half mile from the uh, sound. Yeah, so we're I basically on a cool, glorified sandbar. Yeah. So, but yeah, I've been out to San Diego in the summer. It is very hot. Yeah. It could be worse. You could be in PA. This is true. Yeah, isn't that bad? Yes, it is. I love the it's, scenery. Isn't it, isn't it a crime against humanity? Is that living in Pennsylvania? Pennsylvania? Yeah. <laughs> or the state of Pennsylvania. Uh, possibly. I think we should just take the state of Pennsylvania, kind of wall it off, and just make that our national prison. <laughs> People you will really this? appreciate where they live after they live in Pennsylvania. And we can make the prison <laughs> sentences yeah. really and short to get the point across. Like, they could be, like, two weeks, and that, that's all that's needed. Violent crimes go to Pittsburgh, drug crimes go to Philly. <laughs> Good. But what's Mechanicsburg? <laughs> Silver Ravenwolf. <laughs> hey, why, are you, why, why are you trying to tempt me to say beefable words? Hey, if you know where she lives, we could totally stop by her house on the way down to Amber's tomorrow. Oh, God. I actually once saw something really funny in Pennsylvania. I did. I was on the road. A um, family tree that forked? Um, <laughs> no, oh, no, he said one. funny, the, not abnormal. <laughs> not like, no, no, I, you know, I, I actually know seven. people who are... Who are proud of being related to their relatives three different ways. Yeah, nice. And you know, I was on Route 15 on the way to upstate New York, and I was um, being. <clears throat> yes, I was. I'll try again, I'm sorry. I was on the road being. I'm the church bus. It was one of these old 1960s buses with two doors on the back. The door on the left had a sign that reads, This Way to Jesus. And the door on the right had a sign that reads, Emergency Exit. <laughs> I thought that was 
It was funny. I lulled. Nice. Mm. Oh. Hmm? Naria, you Did had you a couple of irrelevant five 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 wasn't so concerned about psychologically scarring Dave, and especially if it wasn't for the fact it was in the middle of nowhere. <sighs> I could take Dave on a drive, and if he had a camera, the commentary that would go with it would become a meme for all times. Why don't we take Silver Raymond Wolf with us and see what happens? <laughs> I met her once. She's actually kind of cool. Neat lady. I'm not so crazy about her later books, I confess. The first three books that she you wrote, you know, to... Um, the Ride A and those things are pretty decent beginning primers if you just want to get an idea of what it all means. But then I confess, I think she kind of sold out on the, on the cash cow and went in for, for marketable things like the Teen Witch Kit. Yep. And so I she, that which really <laughs> cost her credibility. <laughs> The only thing I have to say I like about Teen Witch, there's one thing I like about it. In the introduction, she writes a letter to the teenager explaining what this book is about. Then she writes an introduction for the teenager's parents, advising them what to look for and what they don't have to worry about. I thought that was cool. So I wanted to ask, is there anything you made that you've been surprised with the potency of? Um, well, when I put things together and, and they're separate little things, they don't seem that, like, sort of a kick in the face. So when you put them together and let them stew for a while, like in herbs and stuff, they don't want to open it and be like, holy crap, like the smell will hit you, and that always affects different memories and whatnot and different in your emotions and everything, or the um, texture of the blend or something kind of triggers different um, different things in you. I've never, because I tr do trial and error, I've never really surprised with stuff I'm going for because I know what I'm putting into it and know how they've, what they've done before. One thing that I've worked with is the, the camphor oil. It's just camphor and different oils and then camphor and then camphor oil. And I'm like, okay, it's really simple, but it's using hoodoo. And um, this isn't something that I, I personally made up myself, so I wasn't, I don't know if it really can, works or whatever, but when I've used it, I was having, like, issues sort of thing. I kept feeling like I was seeing, like, when I was sleeping, I kept waking up because I kept feeling like something was behind me. And someone's like, oh, it's a ghost, oh, it's this, blah, blah, blah. And I heard camp oil was good for kind of, like, keeping that sort of stuff away, and I used it on the, um, no, not camper oil, camp for whoever's writing this. <laughs> um, and it kind of, like, it like made it all go away, and I never had an issue with that that feeling like somebody was standing there staring at me while I'm sleeping issue. But I don't know if you meant like using it in my practice has it been potent, or do you mean like what I've opened it and I'm kind of like holy crap, my instant reaction to them. In practice. So yeah, the camphor oil. Um, there was a candle I made. I had I didn't make it myself. I basically dug out the bottom of it, and I was having like a um, bunch of crap in my life, and I dug out the bottom of it and packed it full of herbs. And when it burned down, I could feel it, like, melting stuff out of my life. But um, that's nothing I really... It's not a blend that I offer in my shop, so I can't really... It doesn't have a name or anything. But, yeah, there's different things. Depending on how... It depends on, my like, my mood and my energy that I'm putting into it. It depends on how much stuff I'm putting into what I'm making and how I'm using the product, too. So you can't, I can't really say if it's the product or if it's what I'm putting into it at the same time. But then again, I wouldn't be... It, it would have been lacking something if I hadn't used something that I made myself. But I know what's in it and everything. Um, okay, I'm rambling. It's not making any sense. Yes, I've had experiences where it's been really potent, but I can't really pinpoint one where I can say it was exactly that product. Because I, I use different products in conjunction with each other a lot of times. Like, a lot of times I'll mix... If I use something, I always add, like, a little dash of Van Van on myself when I'm doing something. When I'm using another oil to, like, kind of oomph it. So I can't tell if it's, like, the Van Van oil or if it's the... Um, what do you say, like, come to me lover oil or something? All right. Quick question. Yeah. Is there anything that you've made recently that you you stop and you look at it and you're like, damn, did I actually make that? That's really awesome. 
you know, just one of those things you've done and you've actually surprised yourself how, like, it's hard to believe that you've actually done that. And you're like, oh my God, this is awesome. Sort of idea. Um, my Freya's Bounty blend has always, like, it's, it's evolved so much. Oh no, here's a good experience. I was making Spirits of Seduction blend for somebody else. And the I didn't even use anything for myself. It was just me, like, working with it. And I ended up getting, like, three different people coming after me, basically. And I'm like, no, 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 I was not trying to seduce anyone. And that's how I met one of this this guy that I dated for, like, a year, but it turned out really crappy at the end. And I'm like, that's, I'm never using this again because I didn't focus it. I wasn't using it on myself. It was just kind of like the energies all around me. So it just, like, drew in a bunch of people. So that was pretty, like, I don't really make spirits of seduction anymore because I'm afraid that if I make it, it's going to, like, just making it is going to do the same thing it did last time. But um, my fire throws are one thing that I'm surprised works pretty damn good. I mean, it's not, I'm because it's made of, like, um, herbs and essential oils and sulfur and some other ingredients. And you throw them in the fire, and they make, like, this little spark sort of thing. They, like, blow up a little bit. But I used them in ritual ones. Um, I used a specific one in ritual ones. And it was just, like... The way that, because it, of the sulfur and everything, and sulfur is used to like, kind of push things and give it a boost. It's also used for other things, too. But had, like, jump-started this stuff that I'd already been working with and working in the ritual. And I could, like, feel it working. I felt like it had, like, instantly sent a message to the universe and, like, kind of, like, literally, like, exploded out and kind of, like, worked its magic that way. <laughs> Does that answer your, what you're saying? If not, I'll just, I can think of something else. <laughs> I can give another example. No, that's perfectly fine. Yeah, that was good. Thank you. Yeah. We're basically just the holy seeing crap. I don't different suck at this experiences. Moment. Yeah. I think a lot of these questions aren't necessarily, you know, just finding out your experiences, but giving our listeners a nudge to know that there are other ex- people out there that have these incredible experiences. Yeah. So, making them feel that they're not alone. There's always yeah. bad experiences, too. It's something, and you're all your energy into something, and then the outcome is just kind of like, oh, that didn't really work. That's why I try and test things before I sell them. I don't want to sell somebody something. I just, like, threw it together. But not, well, not threw it together, but I've gone through my little process with that I do, and have it just kind of be like this, sort of, like, not really working. <laughs> Like, Mithra's Vengeance, when I first made it, it was just kind of like, oh, okay. And then I changed, like, the carrier oil and everything. I changed a couple of herbs, and I was like, okay, it's working now. There's always that kind of, like, and those are always, like, kind of, like, make you feel crappy when it doesn't really work how you had planned it to. But then it make, drives you to, like, make it better and perfect it. I'm a little OCD, so I'm like, you will work. I will find a way to make you work. I think it's What do you make for amusing. people's pets? I'm sorry. Oh, I was going to say, I think on creation, uh, I don't know if you've ever come across this, but I know Amber has, and I know that she's yelled at me, that I've made something or she's made something. She's like, yeah, this works a little bit too well. I don't think it's safe to give to anybody else. This is just going to get put away for now. Yeah, that's how I kind of felt with the spirits of seduction that I just talked about. Because I'm like, unless this person who's using it is really focusing... They're going to get a bunch of, like, stray hounds coming after them on their scent or something. But I eventually, like, yeah. It was just a little too... Not even using it and to have people kind of, like, start sensing it in my energy or whatever. I was kind of afraid that it would... Uh, but I gave it to one friend and she kind of, like, enjoyed the outcome of it. So, But I'm, I was wary of giving it to anybody who did not know because I was, yeah. There's been other little instances like that, but not really. I don't ever really usually have a huge problem with something being so like, holy crap, okay, this is going to be locked away sort of instance, sort of reaction. We keep seeing NRIA's light, light pop up and then like nothing, like she gets cut off or something. Oh, I just said it right here too. Never mind. Oh, Naria don't like to talk. Okay. Miles, did you have a comment, question, something beforehand? Oh, just I wanted to ask, what have you made for people's pets, if anything? What do I make of their pets? Like, how do I interact with people's pets? What 
have you made for them? Oh, like, have you made things for people like, to like, use for or with pets? Okay. The first like thing I thought I had for was like dogs, cat, whatever. Tearing it apart or something after it passed away. I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I have oh, not so no. um, about somebody's cat or something for ritual or no. Um, I haven't really made anything for people's pets because a lot of the I don't. I'm not. I've never really became. I admit I've never really been connected with animals. I'm actually more connected with plants than I am with animals, and so I don't really know too much about what affects their skin what affects their digestive system if I made them for something. So I don't really make things for animals. I was thinking of making, like, pagan-related collars for um, animals, but I see my mm -hmm. cats rip off their collars constantly, so I don't want to, like, go and put, like, and buy good materials to make a really nice collar for something that the animal's going to lose and the and owner's going to be like, well, there's wasted money or something. I don't... I've seen some people yeah. make things for uh, people's animals, but I'm just... It's not my... It's not really my thing. I don't know. I guess I could if somebody really... I've had a couple people ask me, like, hey, I'm buying this herb. How will it affect my dog if he accidentally ingests it or something? And then I've had to do research or ask some of my friends who have worked with animals more than I have, who have worked in, like, shelters and whatnot. Um, but, yeah, I don't really make things for people's animals. And I don't, re I don't really know what I would make for their animals other than, like, maybe something like a skin-soothing oil or something, I guess, if they have some weird... Like, if they fleas or whatever, I can't really... Yeah, I don't really know what to make. <laughs> I guess if I loved animals more, I could become inspired to make something for them. I don't hate animals or anything. I'm just... Uh, I don't have that connection with them, like a lot of people do. Like, I'd never call my cat my, like, my child or something. You can get pictures at JCPenney's or something with them. So, I'm <laughs> like... I don't know. I got names for my cats. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, you do. <laughs> I, don't think some of them are, I don't think some of them are repeatable, Scurvy. <laughs> they are accurate, though. <laughs> Cheers to that. They are accurate. Cats repeatable, are awesome. different from accurate. Cats are awesome. I love to hate them. I mean, they're my best buds and all that stuff, but some days, you know, he's just going in the shower. Hmm. Who's going to tuck his van? Should get a what? A Turkish van. It's a breed of cat known for its love of water. Oh, Don't man. Make this cat will get in the pool, it'll get in the bathtub, it'll get in the shower with you. They love to swim. That's counterproductive. I normally use it and as a... And they're really a... intelligent cats. Yes. And yeah, Karina, normal. I thought Mancoons did too. <laughs> yeah, because our cats have Mancoon. And they're like, try to get in the water. Oh, and they're Big. so cute too. They're super fluffy. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I miss, I miss it when Logan used to hate me. That was really nice. <laughs> So, Karina, oh, have you vended <laughs> at any pagan events so far? Do you plan on vending at any pagan events, perhaps? I've vended at, like, um, at, uh, psychic fairs here in San Diego and, like, gift fairs at the... There's a store here called Tree of Life, Metaphysical Books and Gifts, and she had a gift fair right before Christmas... or right before Yule. And, um, but I've never done a big event. I don't have the funds to really, like, create enough product to go to, like, a huge event, like Pantheon, or anything like Fairy Worlds or something. But, um, it'd be cool eventually to do that. But I don't think my stuff is, my stuff is very, you look at it and you can, it's homemade. It's very homemade. My labels are not super fancy. The packaging is not super, like, it's, like, some people will sell things and, like, the, the stuff that they actually made inside is, like, crap. But the packaging is so badass. I mean, so so um, awesome that you buy it. And my stuff's just like I focus more on like the product instead of like how pretty it is. And then people want to buy pretty. So going to a huge pagan event, I don't think people would really it would really do well. And plus, I'd need funds to do it. I mean, I I work part time in retail and I go to school and and I don't really make lots of money off my Etsy site to really buy enough product and to make it 
glittery and shiny for people. I'm very, like, I love the the homemade look, and I love just, like, very simple stuff. Like, people will throw glitter and crap all over their products, and I'm just like, it actually turns me away from buying that product. But most people I know love that. They love color and glitter and shiny things, and it's just not me. I'd rather okay, have it, now, like, natural. Karina <laughs> now needs to go up on our board to win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she does. <laughs> Awesome. Okay, we we you you have been nominated to make an anti glitter ad. Okay. <laughs> okay. Anti glitter ad. Funny my, my sister's my complete opposite, and she talks about that she bleeds glitter in sequins, and I'm told they like ah get it away. <laughs> so sparkly belongs in things but, like this, you know. That's things like me. what? Quartz or lasers lasers can sparkle that's good too prisms you know shiny stuff you're not like big shiny stuff not little itty bitty flakes of whatever no Mm -hmm. unless it's tinsel tinsel's okay and i have to say your labels are still very nicely done they're still very professional looking um For everybody listening, uh, the two oils came in little glass bottles. Uh, I got the ones with the screw top rather than the cork, just out of personal preference. And they came with a little ribbon around them and this little piece of paper. It looked like it was ripped around the edges and it just had printed what it was. It was a nice, easy-to-read script. It was elegant and looked professional without being, to borrow Brennan's word, froofy. So... (laughs) I I, like I would be impressed labels. over that more than something with a lot of glitter over it. Yeah. Well, most people I see they'll when I've been at events where there's like my table next to titter t- titter table covered in glitter. They're like, it's like they have ADD or something. They're like, oh hi, I see you. Oh god, glitter! And they like run over to it, and I'm like, oh, okay. Well, you know, <laughs> putting glitter in that candle is kind of toxic. So, oh, and the incense full of glitter, that's a little toxic, too. Maybe you should come back to products that I'm not going to kill you. Um, well, or make you sick or something. But have um, you ever seen know. glitter in a fire? <laughs> <laughs> I like your labels. These are cool. I do. That's oh. nice. I'm that on the Etsy like... page right now. Oh. Hmm? And, well, most pagans know... And you can't judge a book by its cover. Many of us, for various reasons, have to dress drab or appear plain in mundania. Otherwise, if we draw too much attention to ourselves, we might cause unforeseen consequences. And so sometimes you'll find a drab label with something really remarkable inside. Whereas if it's this great, big, high, flashy, glittery, glitzy, amazing, I'm so cool, look at me label... All you're paying for is the label. What's in there isn't worth the price you paid for it. I think I would yeah. spend more time at your table than, than at the glitter bomb next door. <laughs> glitter bomb. <laughs> Explosion. Sorry, that just reminded me of all of the pixie uh, <laughs> dressing up places that was at uh, N- NCPPD. Yeah. CNCPPD. Yeah. You see fairy so they had two booths that dressed there. you up as pixies or fairies. And there was glitter everywhere. <coughs> there was glitter henna tattoos. And there was tie-dye. And I had yeah, painted Yeah, I was so happy to finally go to a pagan event where there were no freaking fairies. <laughs> I'm not talking about gay people. I'm talking about the people with the freaking wings. <laughs> yeah. I think wrong. there was like one or two, but it, it wasn't horrible. Yeah, this one actually wasn't too bad. Now, Barrett said that he's having mic problems, and he wanted to ask, do you have a patron god for the heathen stuff, or do you look at them all as kind of equal? <laughs> well, they're all kind of, I feel like they're all, if you want, not literally, but like I feel like they're kind of like our ancestors or something in my personal practice. So they all kind of are important in a way, but I was when I first got into it, I was really connected to Frau Holda, was connected to Frigga. So I feel really connected to her in a sense. But I was having dreams about Thor 
And at first, Thor kind of scared me, because I was like, oh, hell no, I'm not messing with Thor. But now I'm kind of like, he keeps showing up, so I'm like, all right, I guess I should uh, acknowledge you. I don't really have, like, somebody who I really like. I don't have, like, my go-to god or something. I kind of just, um, it depends on the situation or whatnot that I'm working with. You know, I, there's nothing really, I'm not going to say, like, I am a daughter of Odin or whatever. I'm actually working on my SCA persona, and it's a Viking person, so I do Viking reenactment. And I made her into a spay wife, and also she ends up being a shield maiden, because I'm going to oomph my persona. If I get to make up my own life, I'm totally going to make it badass. So, um... So I make her a, a, a daughter of Odin, basically, because she's a spay wife, so she's working with different magical things and whatnot. And I could say she's connected to Freya as well, because my nickname in our house is Valkyrie, and it, Freya has a lot of connections with the Valkyries as well. So I'm kind of working on making her sort of work with Odin and Freya, and I've never really worked with Freya before, because I always just immediately put her to, like, love stuff, and I'm like, I don't want to deal with hearts and whatever... And so I've always, like, overlooked her. But now that I've studied more about her, I know that she's more, she's pretty uh, heavy-duty, awesome woman, or whatever deity. I'm kind of going towards her as well. I've, in, my, in my persona also, I made my father, okay, it sounds weird, but I made him a son of Njord, so, like, the Norse, the, like, a, a water deity, sort of, to speak. So I'm kind of, like, t- like playing with all of them. I, 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 there's no one that I really go to so to speak, except for when I'm, I brow hold up, so I guess you could say Frigga is mainly my my top one. But I, that kind of gave them all equal attention. Or the main gods at least equal attention. I hope that answered your question, Barrett, because your typing's even <laughs> quiet. Okay. As we all about watch Barrett type in the chat room. <laughs> Typing is so no one saying a bl- It's a podcast, and no one's saying a bloody thing. Because <laughs> they're typing. <laughs> so he feels the same way that they're. That was too. If I was to walk into your house, how much clue would I have just from looking around that oh, God. this heathen voodoo empathy person lives there? Okay, when people have come into my house, into my because my mom, a lot of my stuff that I'm into and decorate the way I decorate is a lot like my mom because obviously she's my mom and I'm influenced by her. People walk into my house and they're like, "Oh my God, you live in a hippie place." But I don't get how they get hippie out of it. I feel like, because all the walls are different colors, like my living room's like this dark red, and there's my mom decorates with moss and sticks and natural things. So you kind of go in there and they say hippie, but when I'm like, when I think hippie, I'm like, there's no tie-dye in here. But, um, and she sprays the house with patchouli orange spray, too, so I'm like, maybe it's the patchouli or something. And you walk into my bedroom, it's all knickknacks. I have a bunch of wooden shoes, like the, like the Scandinavian wooden shoes, I have, like, little Viking stuff everywhere, a bunch of different folklore sort of related things. Like, I have, like, a Rapunzel box and stuff. And then, like, in between all those things, there'll be, like, a little Scully box or something. But it's very... I did a um, a video of my room on my YouTube, actually, so you can see it. But it's not very good quality. But it's basically... My room's filled with, like, a bunch of random crappy things. And I have, like, herbs hanging from my roof and stuff. So I think when you go in there, you can kind of get a gist that, like... Maybe she's um, into something else, considering she has like four altars. No, <laughs> but um, they're not really like I don't. They're not altars like a lot of people use them though. Like I'll just make them um, like my working altar for making stuff for people, and then my other one for where I'll give my little offerings and stuff. And then I have little tiny ones that are kind of basically just decoration. In a sense, I'll light them and put candles on them when I'm doing other things. But if you want to see what it looks like, there's a video on my YouTube. Um, but it's basically just like there's no wall space left. It's covered in like pagany related things. There's a lot of Emily Emily Balabe prints, and she does goddess artwork. And there is um, some prints from the Hoodoo Shop on Etsy too. Um, I think I think the link is called Magic Shop though. And there's a bunch of different 
goddess figurines and whatnot, but and there's uh, lots of gnomes. I don't know if gnomes are a hint of a uh, person who's into anything alternative, but when I made, I, I entered an alter enemy contest, and my alt, my one alter that I entered a picture of has gnomes all over it, and instantly everyone's like, oh, that's Karina's alter, and I'm like, how are gnomes associated with me? But I guess it's the, the whole German thing, so I'm super proud of my German heritage and everything. Even though I think, wasn't gnomes like a French thing before? Like, the garden gnome was a French thing? I don't know. Or maybe like gnomes are a German thing, and the garden gnome, as people stealing them from your yards, was a French thing. Oh, he's French. <laughs> gnomes are German, I think. Yeah, that's what I thought. But, but the garden gnome, the, the idea of stealing garden gnomes, do you know what I'm talking about? Like, they do the, gar- the gnome commercials where he travels everywhere. Yes. But, like, there's this practice right. of you, if you know in your front yard, people would steal it and then put it in their yard, and it's like this continuously stealing gnomes thing. I think that was a French. That was a practical <laughs> joke, wasn't it? Yeah, but I think it was a, a French. It was also thing. an internet meme know. in the mid 90s. It was a what? It was. It was. Mid 90s, what? It was an internet meme. Oh, okay. You know what a meme is? Yeah. Okay, in mid 90s, I was like, I think in middle school or elementary school. And I was listening to Spice Girls and not going on the computer, so I don't know. I've never seen it. <laughs> okay. Sorry, didn't mean to laugh. It's all right. <laughs> so if you were to say that you had a totem animal, what would it be? Oh, God. <laughs> I, think, I think I've talked to you about this online. I'm going to go somebody else. Uh-huh. I, I just really like the answer, so I wanted to bring it up. Uh, I try to do... I've not... When I do meditation, I'm one of those people that would rather do an ecstatic practice, like get hyped up to do so, to go into a trance rather than like sit there and try and calm myself. Um, but I finally got this meditation out of this book called Scorzy, Sor, Sor Geek Zok. I cannot pronounce it, but the author is Veronica Kummer or Kummer or something or whatever. Um, and it was talking about envisioning yourself flying over this field, and the animal that you're flying on is your totem animal. And I was like, fine, I'll give it a try. And it actually worked for me. The first time, it was actually a plant leaf. And I think it was a philodendron leaf. But I was like, no, my totem animal can't be a leaf. And then the second time I did it, I got more serious <laughs> about it. And I looked down, and I'm like, what the hell am I riding on? And I'm like, is this a butterfly? Is this a bug? And it was, it was a moth. And I was like, no, I'm not getting a freaking insect as a totem animal. But then when I researched the moth and its symbolism, I was like, holy crap, this is this is perfect for me, like, no wonder I got a moth, like, this is exactly, it works, it, it works perfectly for everything that I'm doing, and my personality, even, in the, you know, all those different things, so, um, I've really gotten a moth, too, there's a bunch of moths in my bedroom, my mom even bought me a moth pendant for Yule, moths are pretty badass, once you start to look at them, other than, like, these, because a lot of times when people see moths, like, oh, kill it, and I'm like, no, don't kill it, and moths showed up a lot after that meditation, too, I had one of my friends who was afraid of them. She's like, I'm afraid of the nighttime butterfly. And she wanted to kill it. And I'm like, no, that's Karina's totem bug. I'm like, Don't kill it. So, oh, the nighttime butterfly. I thought that was the cutest thing. That's why I love kids. Nighttime butterfly. I can really see you as moth. Me? Oh. Yeah, you. I can see you as moth easily. So, if... So, if... <clears throat> I'll try again. If I come to your house and sh- kind of bright light, will you run out and crush your head into it? If, oh, <laughs> no. no. My house is being right poor in bed. I a poopy <laughs> head, I know. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, it's all good. I, I, I approve. <laughs> bright light, yay. Bash, bash, bash. Sorry. <laughs> Not so funny that way. I'm not helping, am I? <laughs> well, I have been noticing that it is now after 10 o'clock on the East Coast. And oh, we've yeah, been going for it. about two hours. So if there's <laughs> anything else we wanted to bring up, and if not, if did we want to wrap it up? Oh, not crickets, moths. We just covered this. Make a moth <laughs> sound. If nobody has anything, I've had pizza. <laughs> 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 I don't know what else to do for a moth. 
network needs to make <laughs> PCP awesome. moth. Or PCP butter. These are the two or, Japanese princesses and Mothra, they kick butt. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, did Squirt get some PCP mascot business cards? Or did that never materialize? Wait, you know what I'm saying? You're guys talking to PCP. At first, I thought you were talking about, like, the drug or something. I'm like, why are they talking about that on this podcast? That's terrible. And I was like, oh, pagan centered podcast. So I'm like, you dirt something there. Dave wins. Uh oh. Scroll up in the chat in the <laughs> Skype chat. Yeah. Say. Mm, why that's why everyone. Oh, but yeah. people <laughs> listening. <laughs> a month from now, when people download this episode to listen, they won't be able to scroll up in the Skype chat. You noodle. Yeah, but it's a nice, so nice thing that I said. <laughs> I made a bet and I won. <laughs> Yay, go you. <laughs> so do we want to wrap up with final thoughts? Sure. I think we should. Okay. <laughs> oh, what <there> happened? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Okay. Thank you, have really. Hmm? Miles proves my point yet again. <laughs> What's my point? I know. Um, oh. I don't think we actually really talked about any, like, side topics of deep, like, there it is type stuff. But so I think the best, my best final thought is thank you very much for being on. It was wonderful having you. Thank you for having me. This was kind of fun. I was a little, like, worried I'd end up, like, rambling you guys to death, so I think I only, like, half rambled you to death. Okay. Well, that's okay. We're used to it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and from the initial listen, this isn't going to be a very hard interview to uh, post-produce, so I wouldn't worry about it at all. Oh, cool. Hey, Karina, good. I just wanted to say for any fun, my first, last, and only thought, <laughs> great <laughs> Hey guys, great job with everything. Good job with overcoming your fears. What a uh, what a cool way. What a 2011 way to get over your fears. Good job. Good luck and keep going with it, huh? Oh, thank you. <laughs> you rock. Yay. <laughs> My final thought is check out our Etsy shop. It has full of awesome stuff, including lots of stuff that you won't get from the big name shops like... Uh, I don't remember the name of that mail order catalog off the hand. That uh, Azure Green. That's the one, Azure Green. <laughs> yeah, um, I I I really like like uh, the Karina's uh, shop. It has well well because I have an inner pyro thing going on, and it also has a van band, which is kind of not a normal thing to find, which is kind of surprising in its own way. It is. It's a good page. I like what's here. Was your inner pyro attracted to the fire throws? Is that what happened? I I, I like fire throws. Yeah. I, I first encountered them about uh, six years ago now, and I think they're awesome. They are cool. Okay, I'm on your page, and please tell me what Realm of the Dead Goat's Milk Soap is. Realm of the Dead. Yes. It is a um, blend that I made originally at Samhain. It's supposed to like uh, to call ancestors to you. Basically, it's for, it's for like spirit and ancestor work. But the reason I put it in the soap was because a lot of the times, um, like re pre ritual, people will take certain baths and like a bath, like a salt bath or a milk bath or something, to prepare themselves for rituals. So I figured if I made it into a soap. If you're about to prepare yourself mentally, men mentally, mentally and physically and everything <laughs> for this ritual, we were because that's like it can be heavy duty when you're going into spirit work and ancestor work. So to take a shower and a bath and use the soap to kind of bring that sort of things and that sort of energy into onto your skin and onto your body and, and basically into your sort of uh, your little field around you sort of thing was a sort of thing for me. I made a bunch of different other soaps, like I made that a brew in. 
Okay, so it's goat milk soap for a realm of the dead, like ancestor worship ritual. Because yeah. when I was on this page, I saw realm of the dead god. I mean, realm of the dead goat milk soap, and thought, ew. <laughs> <laughs> The zombie goat soap. I don't soap. want... Yeah, zombie <laughs> goat soap. Yay! <laughs> That's like all kinds of wrong. <laughs> and there's, but there's some things on this page that are awesomely cool. Oh, cool. It is the soap that will bring about the zombie apocalypse. <laughs> which more people prepare don't for than they do for real natural disasters, by the way. Don't put that on Karina. We <laughs> like <laughs> Karina. <laughs> zombie apocalypse, but not really anything for, like, they'll have this thing, like, hey, we're going to Costco, and we're going to do this, and this is how we're going to survive the zombie apocalypse. Like, hey, what happens if a natural disaster? They're like, I didn't think about that. And I'm like, you know it's more likely that we'll have a natural disaster than zombies. Like, you don't know that. And I'm like, all right. Okay. Well, consider, um, like, the first <laughs> rule of zombie land is cardio, and we all suck at that. I'm, you know. Well, I mean, uh, since we're on a topic of zombies, and we just had Zombie Jew Day this past Sunday as a recording, we have a question from the chat room. <laughs> Actually, it's this Cordian 13 asking Karina to talk about the grave dirt he got you. Okay. What does he want to know about the grave dirt? I don't know. He, he just wants you to I talk have... about it. Okay, graveyard dirt. Grave, I suppose. He, okay, but this is my friend. He got me graveyard dirt from a... Um, it's the cemetery his parents are buried in. And uh, he, he basically got it for me so I could put it on my site and everything because the only thing I have on there is herbal graveyard dirt, which isn't really acceptable by traditional Hindu practice, practitioners, but it is used as an alternative for people who don't really want to use dirt taken from somebody's grave. But um, you can use it for different um, hoodoo powders and also to in different rituals where you want to bring on... There's tons of different ways you can use graveyard dirt but to bring on... Um, the, basically the energy of that person. Like, say you got it from a, a veteran, and you're doing a, a spell to basically help it become more, not warrior-like, but kind of like more courageous because you're having trouble at work or something, you just down to your boss. You're using that in your ritual, or you can use it um, in different powders to drive people away or whatnot. Depends on the grave you take it from that you could use it for, like different things you can use it for. And he got it for me from a, uh, a newer grave, which I'm, I'm interested in working with. Also, he can, so I'll, he'll let him know now. I have a friend who I'm giving some of it to who's really interested in working with graveyard dirt for the first time, so I am putting it to use. It's not just sitting in my storage or anything. Silence. Okay, uh, my final thought is even in, a, in the situation where two-thirds of this podcast I wasn't able to talk, uh, <laughs> I still talked more than I usually do. So, oh. yeah. <laughs> the more Thank obstacles me. Barrett has to speak in, <laughs> the more he speaks quick. Somebody gets ball gag. Now we just get to another <laughs> Pagan Men's episode. He'll talk. <laughs> <laughs> he oh, I talk. really think hmm? he will talk. I actually think <laughs> you've. <laughs> you've I'll try again, I'm sorry. I think you've found a wonderful synthesis between heathenry, magic, and hoodoo that works well, obviously, and I'm quite charmed by it. Um, and I think you and Nature Punk really have to get together. Nature Punk? We had her Nature on a couple Punk episodes. She made my coyote yeah. headdress. Oh, okay. We interviewed this girl called nature punk like a month ago who um makes arts and crafts and jewelry and cloaks and robes and clothes and things from animal hides bones animal pieces and parts like this um the Pretty cool the, yeah and and um sh and well, the first things that he mentioned when we were talking about religion as a whole was that nature is my church, he said, which I thought was very good. And I can see many similarities in her approach to magic and the work that she does and yours. Hmm. I hope she's listening. Yeah. 
Get in contact with yeah. me. Let's talk. Let's <laughs> Well, if nothing else, I can link you to through Facebook and Etsy. So that's oh. right. We could just Don't ambush them both on. We could What's just ambush them both on for an episode. We could. It was so hard getting this one scheduled. I felt so bad for Amber because I kept having like work and other issues, and I'm like, I'm sorry. And then I'm like, let's wait till after Mercury retrograde. <laughs> So we have a PCP reunion. Right. You know? Uh, that's like a tomorrow. PCP reunion. Yeah. Oh, Is God. Scurvy, quit reminding me that it's, it's so soon that everybody's coming down. Oh, that's right, eh? Yeah. Yeah, because this weekend, half of the people on this podcast will be descending on Amber's house to drive her insane for three days. <laughs> har, har, har. Yes. <laughs> hey man, we are the film crew for this event. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but we are the film crew for this event. <laughs> well, it better damn well be a good thing. <laughs> be afraid, you know be very afraid. Do you know what the scary part about this is, just thinking about it? At some point in time, we'll Brandon, be there. my brother Dave and I are going to go shopping. <laughs> and be at the grocery store, and then we'll come out with enough stuff to take over Canada. <laughs> Watch out, Barrett! <laughs> After they leave here, they're going to Canada. You can videotape our wedding if you'd like. Sure. <laughs> Put it up on the stage. <laughs> Don't worry, it'll be poorly produced, well, to... just like Reagan Road Trip. <laughs> Are you actually coming to Canada? I don't know. We'll figure something out for your wedding. Do it. You kidding? I'm, you kidding? I said. I, we'll take the princess like Meredith. We'll all pile in her, and we'll see what happens. As long as there are no those shots, it should be <laughs> good. <laughs> well, there's the optimism, scurvy. <laughs> We're going to Canada in December, right? <laughs> oh yeah, good oh, planning. Good point. <laughs> what? It's the end of the world party. They're getting married on December twenty first, twenty twelve. Can we just do That's it in wonderful. July and pretend that it's December and bring that fake snow and cotton? Well, it's Canada. They <laughs> might actually have snow in July. Anyways, it's only like minus 20. So. Oh, is that all? I freak out when it's 40 and my bones freeze up. <laughs> minus okay, 20. it's all good. It's all good. Well, we can figure <laughs> something out, okay? Scary, you just need one of those uh, little plug-in things for the oil, and, and then we should be good to go, actually, as long as your heater almost works. And if not, we can plug in some more heaters. <laughs> we'll make sure you're Carina's nice camper oil. oil. Okay. It's not camper oil. I saw that comment. I know. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm just fixated on propane. I don't know why. I'm sorry. Actually, you know, come to think about it, that would be kind of funny, though. What's that? Dragging the, am dragging the amber up there. Okay. Huh? Yeah, Amber, Amber well, gets cold when it. Yeah, I know how cold Amber gets from when I was that newer in Clarion. She's like a velociraptor yeah, with like no yeah, no. <laughs> Amber, if you yeah. do maybe Amber you could cold. be one of my bridesmaids. Ooh! <laughs> I get to be a bridesmaid this August. Yeah, yeah. bridesmaid. Yeah, I think before before I forget, my final thought is thank you so much for being on with us. You are definitely one of the people that we can call an asset to the rest of the pagan community, and we're glad that you're doing what you're doing. Tell us about your SCA house. Okay, real quick, I, sorry, I wanted to add it in because it's been like a huge passion for mine. I just joined the Ravens Call here uh, in San Diego. It's in Escondido. And I wanted to, like, pimp real quick. My, the head of my house, his wife is named D uh, Dana Warder Ellenwood. And she just, I just helped her make a fan page called The Feather and Scale. She has made all my Viking garb. So if you're into Viking, uh, well, she can do any garb, basically. If you're into Viking garb, if you have a bunch of heathen listeners out there who want some badass Viking garb to wear in their rituals or at their blots or whatever, please hit me up and I will totally send you her way. She does custom work for super cheap. Like, I've seen some of the pieces that she makes. She charged me like 40 bucks for a custom piece, so I'll go find it elsewhere for like 120. 
So I had to pimp her real quick and pimp the Ravens and the Ravens call. If that's okay, I'm sorry. Probably go <laughs> that's just of course, the you live in California. You're awesome. Of course you have to be on the other side of the country. <laughs> no. <laughs> you do horns, too. Horns? By Viking garb. Viking helmets didn't bloody have horns on them. No, they didn't. You know, they think they got that from is, um, the depiction of Odin with the ravens on his shoulder, and they eventually turned to like this headdress thing, and they took the yes, idea from that. But the Celtic people, I think, wore horns on some of their garb, though. Or not their garb, but their warrior gear, didn't they? So maybe it came from that. I meant like drinking horns. I, I wasn't sure what you meant oh. by Viking garb. Oh, I was looking. And I was thinking of the cliched, overdone image of the Viking with a horned helmet. Because they didn't have horns on their helmets. I think you're right. There was an image someone saw on a rock carving or a, or a really old minted coin or something like that with the ravens on his shoulders, which on a rubbing of that, looked like they were emerging from the sides of his head, and they thought, well, that must be horns. And it went from there. If you're looking for drinking horns, though, I actually bought a couple of them, and the captain of my SDA house is, after May War, I'm going to push him to finish making the, them. I have the horns already. He's going to clean them and then do leather work on the outside for patches, or not for patches, so you can hook it on your belt. So if you're checking out my site, I'm just going to add some stuff like that, too. And, and Dana, my house, other head, she's teaching me Viking knitting. So I'm going to influence or incorporate even more SCA Viking stuff into my shop with a magical twist on it. So just keep watch after the end of May, because we got war at the end of the next I do month. Have, I do have one word that will make you want to visit Pennsylvania. Yes? The word is Penzik. Penzik? Oh, of? my I've yes. heard about that. I have a friend who lives yes. in Chicago who tells me about it, and I'm like, quit making me drool all over my I phone. Have I, people who, I know people who spend a month at, was it Miller's Farm Pond, I think it's called. Mm -hmm. They live and breathe SCA at Penzig. As I understand it, Penzig was begun years ago when there was a war between a North Kingdom and a South Kingdom over a invasion of property through Pennsylvania, and they declared that we'll have this war, and the loser gets Pittsburgh. Hmm. Huh. Pretty cool. Gets Pittsburgh. That's right. The loser gets Pittsburgh. Yeah. Oh God. The loser gets Pittsburgh, and it's called. It's called Penzik because it's a combination of Pennsylvania and a um, Turek victory. Hmm. Interesting. I think there's videos on Music War and everything too that you can see. Because I know there's some videos all over YouTube. Yeah. I actually posted a road video trip, I think, for your whole. It's worth a road trip. Yay, we're trying to get Vikings. We could be a big Viking yeah. group. There. <laughs> and I have to mention one friend of mine who lives in North Carolina who's huge in Penzik. Pretty much everybody in Penzik knows Akbar. Akbar? You'll probably know Akbar as well. Yes, Akbar. A, hmm. a large and ebullient black man. It's like six degrees of separation. Pretty much everybody I know. Oh, you know Akbar. It's funny. SCA, they know Akbar. Who's he? I'm going to ask my friends who's gone to Pensac before. Are they known? <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. You'll find it. <laughs> okay. Anyway. It is now 10.30 our time, East Coast. I really do have to get myself to bed because I do, in fact, work in the morning because I'm a lightweight. <laughs> Yay, now yeah. everybody else can talk. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm so oh, sorry they mean. Now. <laughs> okay, my final thought. I miss voodoo now. Hmm. They cover a lot of stuff about voodoo on a New World Witchery on that podcast.
pretty intelligent pockets too. I like it. Saturn, did we get your final thoughts somewhere in here? Is there a Saturn here? There you is said he was there. Okay, there is ahead. a Saturn here. I didn't have my microphone for most of the show. I just found it. Oh, that's okay. But, um, my final thoughts is basically just that I think all your stuff is really awesome and how much thought and effort you put into the products that you make and the extreme lack of glitter makes me happy. <laughs> <laughs> Or guys compliments, I feel like so good right now. I'm like, ooh, let's do this again. I feel nice about my stuff. <laughs> Yay, I, I think that's everybody's final thought. Yeah. I think so. Alright, it only took us half an hour to get through final thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, we're gonna take a little bit of a break where we go to Pow Wow this weekend and we'll be back on Tuesday. Different day of the week, Tuesday, with live after day coverage of the International Pagan Coming Out Day, the aftermath, which is hopefully a very good thing. So, we'll see you all on Tuesday. And those of you listening into this podcast feed, that will have been like last year for you. So, good night, everyone. <laughs> good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs> good night. Okay, no! MP3 recordings have ended, but we are still streaming live. Okay. Hi, oh, yeah. oh, guys. We're talking so bloody much. Oh, it's fine. Because you actually brought up some good things, so don't worry about it. I try to. We wouldn't tease you if we didn't like it, there, sweetheart. Okay, thank you guys again. Yeah. I'm gonna. I've been having to pee for like the last hour, so I'm gonna like escape now. <laughs> okay. No, <laughs> oh, you can't go. Thanks, <laughs> Dana. All right. Thanks again. It was a pleasure meeting you. Love and glitter. Love and litter. Yay, litter. <laughs> glitter, litter. No, not yay, litter. <laughs> You bonehead, you're pagan, you shouldn't litter. <laughs> not pagan. Where'd you get that idea? From your presence on this podcast. Dude, we've had yeah, yeah, said it's just not cool enough to be pagan. <laughs> <laughs> or, there you go, I should say. Pardon? <laughs> I am What's the pinnacle website? of pagan coolness. Enough. Thank you. I'll have you know I'm the apotheosis of cool. Love that word. Hmm? Apotheosis. Oh. Apotheosis. Oh, 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 and I have really good news. I texted most of you anyway. Carl went to the acupuncturist yesterday, and she actually convinced him to get his gallbladder out. So the Thursday after powwow, he's going to the surgeon to get the preliminary talk, and everything will be out shortly afterwards as long as it goes well. Yay. So, yay! Yay! yay. What was with sure. his gallbladder? What was wrong? Um, Everything. it should have been out two years ago. Yeah, it's basically been killing him for a long time. <laughs> that was the garlic wars. Yeah, like, it's to the point where he drinks water and it flares up and causes him a lot of pain. Mm -hmm. So, they tried to take it out last year and it was holy hell and, um... Well, it wasn't that bad, it was the surgeon was an idiot. And uh, he's been afraid because it was a hellish experience on a couple different levels. So he hasn't gone again, which is understandable, but it's been bad. I was just going to say I know the feeling. Yeah. So Sir. the acupuncturist did amazing things. His heart doctor is going to be right there. So, yay. And I spoke to him today. He looks better. He was actually talking with uh, Lurch Pagan, one of our vendors that came in today, and was actually about and around for a while, so lots of good energy going around. Oh, I, told, I already told my brother he might be on um, keep uh, him busy detail. Okay. 
You just got so quiet there. I'm so jealous of you people right now. Why? Why? You people Why? going to the powwow that I'm not allowed. <laughs> you can, well, you can come to. No, I can't. You're invited. Guess. Hmm? Fly. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm doing. It's cheaper yeah, than gas. Yeah. Have you heard of how right much now. gas went up in the last month? Yeah, it's four bucks a gallon down here. How much does gas here? cost the way you are? Um, Three eighty something here. I don't know how much it would be in gallons because we use liters. <laughs> right. Um. It's like quickly. Yeah, liters. A dollar thirty a liter or something like that. One thirty. So you multiply <laughs> that by four. That's five twenty a gallon. So yeah, that's give or like take. Twenty dollars a gallon American. <laughs> 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 that's five dollars a gallon yeah <laughs> wow our dollar is worth more than yours so yeah your, your dollar is worth more than ours that's nuts fuck I you this has happened in my lifetime <laughs> when you wow. live again like in the middle of Alberta or something no Winnipeg Winter Peg. I'm sorry I went. and that's where you guys are coming and for our wedding in December yes I'm <laughs> <laughs> here and obey. Oh, we need to drag Miles up for this too. Oh, y'all need to come. Oh, Henry, I, you need to come too. He's on I just live in He's Montreal. Michigan. I know what it's like. Wow, really? Montreal? Yeah, I just live in Montreal. Huh. I was there for five years. Hmm? I used to live there. I was there for oh. five years. Huh, Montreal. That was a fun city to visit. It was an okay place. I was there during the 1976 Olympic Games. I never heard so many expletives strung together into a proper sentence. Until I went to Montreal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're good that way. They're probably oh, yeah. the same expletives that you're used to, though. Things like Tabernak. <laughs> Remember Tabernak? Oh, yeah. It's our church word. I do. Kind of cool. hmm? Oh, great. yeah, you know that. You can put someone. Put yes, Gervy, what? <laughs> I totally got everybody I work with on eggshells now. Oh, why? I'm going down to a powwow this weekend. So, why are they on eggshells? People always assume the worst for me. I don't know why. <laughs> well, when Scurvy says something like it's going to be a spiritual event. <laughs> you kid? I said that. Three, I said that and three people converted to Christianity. You <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, I mean, let's be real. <laughs> on, the off, on the off chance they got it right. <laughs> and if this, and if the joke, and if the joke's true that he grades on results, I'm already doing pretty good. Wow, that's funny. If, if they got it right, I'm totally, totally, totally a banking on my ability to argue to the point where he'll just say, "Fine, do whatever the hell you want." <laughs> argue with Saint Peter. <laughs> <laughs> Although it was, a, it was a joke that a, a minister and a or a priest and a, a taxi driver were uh, going to the airport and they're both in an accident and died. And uh, <clears throat> when they get up to heaven, they they got to go meet God and all that. And God went and asked the uh, priest what he did and all that stuff, and he said he was a priest and blah 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 blah. And God gave him a saint a. Uh, some cheap sandals and a shoddy robe. Taxi driver said, and the next was a taxi driver, and when a taxi driver was asked, he said, well, I drove a taxi for 30 years. And the taxi driver got a fine robe, a wonderful staff, and uh, good sandals. And the, and the uh, priest asked God, it's like, well, why does he get that and I get this, and the God said to the priest, well, 
when you preached, when you gave your sermons, people slept, did their taxes, and daydreamed. While he drove people, they prayed. <laughs> nice. Yeah. I grade based on results. Wow. That's cute. That's... When I was two, my, my parents had me baptized all denominations of Christianity. So I feel that I'm covered no matter what. <laughs> it's kind of redundant. And I have said thank yeah, you that's only times for not baptizing me. <laughs> I was baptized in the Church of England. I just think it didn't take. <laughs> <laughs> so this old guy that I didn't know and I would never see again splashed water on my head and said some words over me and I probably wet myself and so the crap what? It didn't change who I became. How do you know that? Well, unless How his you know intention you be a, what? a different person if uh, you had hadn't been yeah. baptized. You just don't. Well I true, I just don't. <laughs> I Although the odds are that he would not have baptized me in the hopes that I would become a witch. <laughs> True. Right? I am that. So it seems to me that his baptism in the name of the Holy Father didn't do a crap of a lot. <laughs> right? I actually read yeah. the Bible about Pagans four years ago. Pagans hmm? are baptism fails. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I mean, somebody fail. help me understand this. Every time I say I'm going to go have do do anything, everybody always gets afraid. Still Don't trying to figure this out. Everyone's afraid that one day you'll get it right. I'm just thinking that it, if you're uh, inclined to actually do something, that uh, you have motivation, and you having motivation to do something scares people. Well, here's the deal. When I'm actually inclined to do something, I just sort of consider it the act doing itself. When I write poetry, I just, and if, any, if everybody ever says anything good about it, I just say I just held the pen. It wrote itself. <laughs> Close enough to the truth. Nobody writes poetry. Mm-hmm. Nobody writes poetry? I'm just, trying to, I'm just trying to get my brain around the idea that Scurvy writes poetry. Yeah. Okay. No, it's prose and all that stuff. Uh, really great, but it's a good reflection tool. I write poetry too. It's fun. Yay, poetry! Actually, I actually I did that in high school, and they actually uh, had it analyzed by about two shrinks. That was awesome. <laughs> and well, they told me no, I was too intelligent to be in public school, <laughs> and the school was debating having me withdraw. Anything like joking. Vogon poetry, was it? Pardon? Anything like Vogon poetry, was it? Ah. Uh, you know what Vogon poetry is? Yeah, I'm familiar with the book. Wasn't quite that bad. Good. <laughs> 42. Oh, and. Um. Before I forget, I'll send you guys all the links. One of the guys that came on and was listening uh, wanted to know, he does Cornish witchcraft and wanted to know if 
he could come on and, and do an interview about the Cornish witchcraft. I told him it might be a while because we're so backed up that we might take a break. Yay, we're finally taking a fucking break. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still trying to get my friend David Wood organized to do one of these as well. No, I think, I think Cornish witchcraft would be an awesome topic because I know nothing about yeah. it. Don't worry, Dave. We'll keep on with the pagan men, so you'll you'll have something to do. Oh yeah, yeah. That's not a problem. It's just PCP is retardedly backed up. You kidding? Do you have any idea what my post production queue looks like? <laughs> I'm halfway done. The uh, the pagan men from last week. Awesome. <laughs> and I've yeah. only had my computer for like two days. <laughs> Impressive. Score. And he said, this is his Facebook. If you could add him, that would be awesome. Oh, where is his Facebook? I just put it in the chat room. It's on his computer, duh. On those shit, Sherlock. <laughs> That's on somebody Sorry. else's computer. <laughs> Thank you, Captain Obvious. <laughs> Actually, it would be on the, the guy that runs Facebook's computer. Where the the Facebook the server. Friend button? Yes, the server thingy. Aha. Uh -huh. There we go. Uh -huh. And for the pagan coming out day, it's in Dropbox now, part one. Oh, man. It's finally in Dropbox. Dude, I gotta wake up at four in the goddamn morning, people. Why? This is. Because my flight is at oh, 6 30, and I'm an hour away from the airport. Oh. Actually, what time are you getting to PA? Because that trip in the afternoon ish. Okay, we're good, Dan. Hang on, let me figure out how to add this guy as a friend because I really don't know how to do that at this point. Yeah. Because Trippett's being retarded for me, so. And it's Harrisburg International Airport. Ah, uh, hang on. Yeah, that, I can't add him as a friend, so he's SOL okay. on that one. I'll let him know. <laughs> I'd like to add him as a friend. He, there's just no fucking button on this page to do it. Yeah. No, there's none, is there? That's very peculiar. <clears throat> it's he has a setting no that you can put. So he's antisocial? Yes. Maybe. I don't know. But Sweet. it needs to be publicly known on our podcast. I can share his profile. I just can't edit. You can poke him. I can poke him. Oh, that's charming. <laughs> Fuck it, I'm poking him. <laughs> he is poked. <laughs> he probably got like poked by 15 people all at once. Oh, oh, oh. Did you share his profile? I'll poke him too. Uh, Scurvy, how many airports are there really in Harrisburg? I mean, I... <laughs> It's just called Harrisburg on my thing here. That's I'm just making sure you're more. not coming in on. I'm just making sure you're not coming That's in on a Cessna or anything, okay? Uh, it's worse than that. It's a dash eight. <laughs> <laughs> um, the flight, the the, the airport code is MDT. <laughs> M MDT. Yep. Alrighty. Oh yeah, Harrisburg International. How about that? I want this. Oh hey yay, my county has a tornado watch tonight. Yeah, there is a huge Spiffy. fucking storm. There are two yeah. people dead in Across Georgia Central right now. Sea. <coughs> Don't worry, he doesn't care that there's people dead in Georgia. What? <laughs> yeah, there are two people dead in Georgia. You spoon. Yes, I do. Okay, I will be arriving in Harrisburg International at 12.52 p.m. That's eight minutes before 1 p.m. Hi, Odin. What do you want? Scurvy, did you get that? Yep. Okay. So I need picked up You're getting in. One. You're getting in there. Oh, Harrisburg International. Getting in there at two, then. One. You know, as in one Easter. One. Trust me, too. You know, the one before 
two is one. <laughs> <laughs> one plus one plus two plus one. Oh, this is funny. A husband finishes reading a book called Be the Man of the House. He turns to his wife and says, From now on, my word is law. You will prepare me a, go- a homemade meal tonight. Afterwards, we will have the kind of sex that I want. You will bathe me. You will towel my dry. You will towel me dry and then massage my feet and back. Then tomorrow, guess who will dress me and comb my hair? And his wife looks at him and says, Well, my first guess will be the funeral director. <laughs> 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 Amber, can I get an amen? <laughs> I was told, oh, I forget by who, but it was a, it was one of the patrons in the museum, I'm pretty sure, that there was a old Italian couple, and they were giving advice, and one of it was, you know, when, when marriage, that one of the old tales that they tell was mm-hmm. there was a newly wedded couple and the husband was trying to say, this is what you will do, this is how you will do it. And in the middle of the night, she gets up, slips into the kitchen, boils a large pot of water, stands over him and wakes him up. And when he starts to yell and scream about, what do you think you're doing? She goes, just remember, next time, I won't wake you up. (laughs) Nice. (laughs) When will you men learn? Just do what we say, your lives will get a lot better. (laughs) I learned that a long time ago, love. Smart boy. I've got one trait. (laughs) How about you, Amber? No. She keeps trying. <laughs> I, do. I try. Nothing works. Next will be cattle prod. <laughs> I bring one to town. Did you hear that, Brennan? <laughs> do you have a cattle? You really want me to access to a cattle prod? <laughs> I have a fifteen thousand <laughs> volt transformer. Does those bzz things and. In- like in the older horror movies. I, I prefer, I prefer uh, tra- the uh, ignition transformers out of cars <laughs> for those. Uh, they seem to be a bit more durable. Yeah, but 15,000 volts, that's cool. Yeah. Just don't lick it. Brennan, how's that feather up and coming, love? Mm, on hiatus. Okay. Right, kids, it's almost 11. I am going bedly wise. Alright, good night. Oh, good idea. Bye. This has been lots of fun. I love you all. Now I have to run away. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. night. Alright, Scurvy, you have one goal for me to bring down. Joyce says she doesn't need anything else. Okay. I need snake food. Mice. Most major pet stores have them. I know. <laughs> so if you could, if you would be so kind to get me a couple boxes of large mice, and then just let me know what I owe you. <laughs> I somehow feel that we've just triggered a phobia in scurvy. <laughs> Uh, the term would be aversion, but yeah, I'm okay. Okay, we'll just make Brent, we'll just make uh, Saturn do it, and we'll be good. Just I stop at the pet it. store and just go in. I okay, can I just need a couple it. boxes. Sure, we just can't stop by the dock somewhere in DC and just pick up some. Uh, no. <laughs> They're bad. 
See, we get some, but I'm... I always worry about the poison that people put out. Well, after a year, we finally let my cats go outside after we moved them to Winnipeg. How they like it? Well, my cat, um, who I'm very used to being a little hunter, you know, she's totally good with the surrounding area. She kind of went outside, stood on our deck, and was like, well, I've had enough of that. I'm going back in the house. <laughs> <laughs> the baby kitten's like, ooh, eat a bug. Yeah, she has a couple screws loose. Hey, it's named Pancakes. Plural. <laughs> You should meet her owner. He's just as insane. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I mean, heck. Well, yeah. Well, I think there's something wrong with all cats, though. But that's just me. All right. And he said that he just changed his security settings to the lowest on Facebook. So if somebody would be so kind to try again and see what it says. Oh, I'm sorry. Did he like being poked by like 20 people? No <laughs> ad. <laughs> 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 like, probably like, I just got poked wow. by 20 people. What did you say? <laughs> Plenty of detail, no ad. The room, it sounded like Amber said he changed his furry settings. <laughs> Nice. I take no offense. <laughs> to, to the lowest possible setting. <laughs> he changed his furry settings to the lowest possible setting. Does that mean he shaved his head? Oh, I work with Snapwatch. Would you like a reasoning for this. Sure. If the person has thicker hair density on their back than they do on their head, they are Sasquatch. I'm a Sasquatch. <laughs> well, you oh, you have to have hair on your head. <laughs> <laughs> Not trying to be mean. You said that you shave your head, so. I do shave my head. It's not mean. Now, it was, uh, one guy I worked with tore a shirt, and he's furry. I don't. I mean, not quite Wolfman, but I mean, he could. Put the mask on, take a shirt off, and probably pass for it for Halloween. Nobody says anything. Sorry, my general thought was, ah, furry's dream. My thought was, what else is new? They don't even need the cost to go. Likes. Cornish language. Devon culture. Traditional wish, witchcraft. Dislikes. Neo-paganism. Elitism. Bad art. Religious zealots. Mm. I'm looking forward to this now. So a Wiccan who dislikes neo-paganism. More common than you think. <laughs> Sorry to say, Dave, but I guess a lot of people don't like to name themselves Wiccan if they're actually serious and not fluffies because any of the serious people might be might think they're fluffies. So they don't want to chance it. 
Yeah. Like, how do you feel if someone says um, they're wicked? What do you assume automatically? <laughs> <I'm David A. laughs> Was Brandon that laughter? Scoffing in the bathroom. Yeah, Brandon's sitting there trying to hold back laughter in the background. Why are you laughing at me, Brandon? That, that's my general response whenever somebody says that they're Wiccan. <laughs> People you getting weird. You should hear my response if somebody asks me if I'm Wiccan. Do you punch them? And no, he uh, says, fuck you. Oh, okay. Hey, Scurvy. Sometimes I just glare. That one actually seems to work better than the fuck you. Yes, it does. Yeah. What, Naria? Are you Hindu? No. Not okay. recently. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> See, now, Scurvy, now you understand why women just give you a look. We don't need to say anything. You what, have what, now learned some of women ways. What made you ask that, Naria? Because I figured you hadn't been asked in a while. <laughs> <laughs> you know the great thing about the book is that you can close your eyes and you don't see it. Even mm. though I'm probably getting it right now. Oddly enough, I can feel it when Amber gives me a look, even though there's like three states separating us. <laughs> yeah. And a chunk of ocean. Two states, three, something like that, yeah. I don't think I've ever ever said anything too stupid on this podcast that quote, that required me getting the look from Amber. No, she doesn't need to. She knows I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> See, Brandon, my brother, and I went grocery shopping one day, and all of a sudden we just stopped us. We were talking about something. I can't remember what it was, but it was pretty good. Like, Amber's not going to approve. <laughs> and the phone rang. Guess who it was? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and guess what was the first thing that I said? What are you doing? Well, what you talking about and what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> you so that, I mean, you ever, you ever I see like like three or four kittens there, and all of a sudden something moved, and it just attracted all of their attention at the same time. That's what we did. <laughs> Except you attracted the, the the attention of Mama Kitten. Like <laughs> now we're gonna add Dave to that mix. This should get good. <laughs> Dave's a good influence. Amber, have you ever pulled them away by their ears? <laughs> no. I uh, think she's tried at least once. <laughs> this whole really thing kind of lends credence to the whole cult of Amber thing. <laughs> no! The whole what? <laughs> the whole cult of Amber thing. <laughs> nice Saturn. Now, why didn't you say it? So. Oh, okay. He said that his account was hacked a while ago and Facebook has never been the same. So, he's going to contact them and see what's going on. Because hmm. when he tries to add, I gave him a list of everybody. And when he tries to add you guys, it says, you don't know them, you cannot add them. Now that's special ed. You can't add them unless they, you've already added them. It's like your mother telling you that you're not allowed to talk to strangers. Well, no. If I don't talk to strangers, then how the hell do I meet anybody new? My dad did it all the time. In fact, you know, 20 minute trip to the to the parts store ended up being a two hour trip because he stood there and talked to whoever else happened to come in.
Erwin, yeah. quit attacking the mute button. This should be entertaining. Saturn's under a false notion that there's security on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> there's a security panel. Hi. Ruth Goldberg machine? Uh huh. Sound like you're setting off a Ruth Goldberg machine. No, no. What's a Ruth Goldberg machine? Maria. Um, a link in a sec. If I'm. Do, do, do. What does it do? Oh, Rube Goldberg. There we go. It's a Ruth. Yeah, yeah, what does it do? It's a contraption. A bunch of simple machines linked together to complete a very simple action that could be done easily otherwise. Okay. Like a mouse trap. Yeah, mouse <laughs> trap machine. Crazy contraption. <laughs> it's mouse trap. I got slapped. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Well, what do you say when she slaps you? What? <laughs> What'd you say? <laughs> I'm sorry. I went there. What does he say when I slap him? Is that the question? Yeah. <laughs> okay, Are you I saying you're trying... Finally. Hey, Dave. Does anybody else think of anything else that I might need to bring to North Carolina? Chargers. Ah, uh, packed. Huh? A flashlight. You always need a flashlight. Scurvy has that. Uh, Scurvy, you got a um, DC to AC <laughs> converter? Yeah. Okay. Two of them, actually. Awesome. Okay, so I don't need to bring mine. I even got one taped to a battery. <laughs> a little too underwater. Oh, um, if you're sensitive to any kind of bug spray, whatever bug spray you would like to use, because the mos it's going to rain, yeah. so that means the mosquitoes are coming out, and... Yep. Uh, sorry, taking care of. Alright. Um, it is going to be a little bit warm, so it's going to be like in the 70s or so, so... Yeah, I packed Texas clothing, we're good. Okay. <laughs> See, I got uh, a 200 watt one and a 1000 watt one. Ooh, awesome. So we could power Amber's house if we need it, too. <laughs> a thousand. A thousand watts, that's... Nine amps-ish. Eight amps. Eight amps. Sorry. Seven. I would, eh, I always get my mental math fucked up. Oh, there's a phase angle on it, so it actually comes out to about seven amps effectively. Okay. <laughs> Which, it's still enough for a small fridge and a... AC unit and a... Maybe a laptop or two. Hey, I got a good idea. What? You can take that giant battery that has the thousand watt converter on it. That's that's the two hundred. Oh, whatever. Which... I don't care. I don't need that much. Um, I could plug my camera into it. This way we can reduce the amount of time for recharges. All right, cool. How long is Powell, well, guys? Just the weekend? Yeah. yeah. Yep. I still say that two days is too short. You need three days. Yeah, the problem is getting the housing donated and everything else. Yeah, I know. Oh. <laughs> so this is just me being mean. So you know how Barbara was all excited because Joy's got her house? For the yeah. weekend? Okay. Barbara might be in a small motel room. Who? Barbara might be in a s with um our drum groups normally get housing. Yeah. Um the the rental companies allow us to to use one of the house and they write it off. Yeah. And then Barbara and Raccoon usually um share a housing for whatever reason. They're not get, they might not get a house this year, they might just get a small hotel room. Okay. That's all that they really need. 
I know. Like well, Larissa isn't coming, and the dogs aren't coming, and... <sighs> makes my life easier. Oh, hell, last year they had to keep the dog out in the car anyways. Because the house, they, they didn't allow our pets. Also, keep in mind that uh, renters can't... There's no tax write-off for them for donating rental. The rental companies do. They get a tax mm -hmm. write-off. I'd be interested in knowing how. Like any know. other... Like any other business, just do uh, as a donation. But donations, uh, I looked into the tax code on that. Donation cannot be rental. I was thinking about doing some fun tax stuff, and that was the one thing I needed to know. It mm. might be different because it's not a long-term rental. It's just a... a because the tax term. law is basically, you, you have to give something tangible. And, and it has to be something that once it's given away, you never get it back. And with a rental property, you always get the rental property back. Like if you were to literally take the building and donate it to them, then that, that could be written off. Well, services can be. And they might be written off as a service. No, my company has really good accountants, and they've yet to find a way to, to write off our, our free licensing. <laughs> It might not be, it just might be donated. I don't know. Yeah, usually a lot of people donate it just for goodwill and fuck it, nobody else is using it. Yeah. Also, I think they also get an ad, too. And Yeah, ads are good. And also, hey, having somebody use your house means that stuff isn't breaking in your house. Mm -hmm. Normally. Normally. <laughs> well, with this crowd, probably. With rare exception. Mm. We know the rare exception. So yeah, most of the rest of everybody is coming in tomorrow. Setup will be Friday. So all that will be going on. Chat room think. just got surprisingly cannibalistic and or X-rated. <laughs> Brandon, are you putting barbecue sauce on you? On me? Yeah. I think he's going to turn cannibalistic. You might want to do something about that. He might. Either cannibalistic or kinky, either way. Mm. See, I just said that. So scary, uh, will you be the one picking me up? Uh, actually, I got off of work tomorrow. Okay, that's why I was asking, because I knew William was picking me up because you were working, but I know things have changed. Uh, actually, I got pretty decent odds of picking you up. Who? What? I, I got pretty decent odds of picking you up. Probably be William and I up there. Okay, cool. Well, not that it matters. You all look the same, but... <laughs> And we just had one of our vendors, um, when Lurch came in, he went over to the the campgrounds that he normally stays at, which is the federal ones, and said that there's, it should be no problem, that there's, he's never seen it more than half full. Awesome. Ever. I think there's like 150 sites or something. It is huge. What's it run for get down there? What's Kirby? What's it run for a weekend down there, anyway? I don't know. I'd have to ask Lurch. Which one? The um, federal? $20 yeah. a night. Okay, cool. Right, and they have hookups, right? I think so. I think they have water and power. I'm not certain, though. Some of them do. What campground is this? Federal campground at um, Billy Mitchell Airport. I thought they were staying at um, Camp Wood or whatever the hell it is right down the road. They never picked up the phone. Oh. They're good at that. They did have a help wanted sign out there. <laughs> yeah, they did. Depending on how the next couple weeks go, I might be down there saying, hey, do you need a maintenance guy? 
Either by choice or by necessity. This is, this wouldn't be the Frisco campground, would it? Which one? They're both in Frisco. Okay, we have I'm like looking three at the Frisco. one that's uh, the government one. Yes. Yeah. There are no hookups. Hmm. Well, that's weird. No biggie. We can live with that, though. Nope. Is there power or not even? Absolutely no hookups. We'll have to wander down in that direction. I thought they did. You could have sworn they did, too. Inconvenient, but we're not screwed. We're, we're okay. We'll just recharge everything at average points. Also, we could just check out and see what the the fees for the other places to do. Uh, if it's Frisco is twenty dollars, Oak Creek twenty three, twenty at Cape Point, and twenty at Oregon Inlet. Well, oh, no, the only I place would be close for you is the Frisco. Uh, and it's also okay that they you did them pick up the phone because um, nobody has accepts reservations at the federal campgrounds. There are no reservations. Well, yeah, that one doesn't, but there's I was the one next the other door. One. What is uh, the other one's called? I'm they need to get... they need to invest in an answering machine. You get used to it down here. <laughs> Man, most people didn't even have cell phones whenever like probably five years ago, whenever we first came down here. Actually, yeah, whenever we were setting up a camp, they're like you have a cell phone? Oh my god. <clears throat> There's the website for the campground. <clears throat> you know, with such an obvious name, why didn't they not pop up on Google? <laughs> okay. I love their color choices there. That blue on red, it just sort of... <laughs> it reminds me of 1998. <laughs> yeah. It makes me wonder if I'm on PCP or something. I don't know. Okay, what date is it? Uh. Weekly, holiday... How about daily? Daily with utilities, um, thirty-nine dollars. That's tent site RVs. Tent site RV site. Oh fuck, forty-eight. Forty-five. Forty-five with electric. Forty-five with electric and water. Forty-eight for full hookup. No, forty-eights for uh. Sound front sound. and full hookup. Yeah. But there's, their bathhouses are actually really nice, so you don't need a pool. And they have a pool. Because we would need a pool. I don't know. You know, I think this website might have actually been made in 1998. It might have. Copyright 2010. Well, that just means somebody went ahead and changed something in 2010. <laughs> yeah. Why do they have hey, Why does on Facebook? Why hey, do you have do triple they have? A or <laughs> Scurvy, are you technically considered military or not? Uh That's a gray area for uh, federal employees. Um the federal I'm, So you're are, still civil service officially. You, I'm department military of the army. enough. I'm department of the army. I'm an army civilian, but that's It's civil service. Yeah. Okay. So you don't get the military discounts? You still have a military ID? You old one? Yeah. Fuck it, let's try it. Yeah, no. and they also have AAA. I got AAA. So that'll probably no. knock off uh, about five, five, six bucks. I'll pay the five, six bucks. I don't flash that badge. Mm. I'll pay this. I'll, I'll flash my AAA. <laughs> flash AAA if you want. I don't flash the military. Yeah, for you. Uh, that's completely understandable. <clears throat> Good for you. Um, I actually, I actually have a friend of mine that made a this in the late nineties. He uh, actually made it to the internet. You remember uh, back in the late nineties, some of those uh, people that were in the Middle East, or the uh, American contractors that got all uh, tortured and all that stuff. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, I was one of the guys I worked with in the Navy. Oh, it's active military. That's what it is. Okay, so yeah, yeah that wouldn't even qualify. But I got AAA, so we're good. Excuse me, you're old enough. Do you have AARP? Ouch! <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he's only 
only a couple of years older than I am. <coughs> oh, and I got me a... I, I bought me a uh, battery charger. Because I decided, you know, since I got this spare car battery or two, they're all going to be charged. Yeah. You know, silly me was like, hey, Amber, can we get directions? And I realized, oh, wait, there's only one road on the fucking island. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just hey, pass by I it, or we didn't get there far, far enough. <laughs> There was that time that we did accidentally go across Alligator River the first time down here. But that was a wrong term up, up in Nags Head. Yeah, that was after the Tangier Outlets. So the directions are, once you hit Tangier Outlets, make sure you're as far right as you can be. Left. Or left. Left. Sorry, dyslexic. We're as just not going to listen to Brandon. <laughs> as far left, go through that light. Then Basically, go follow the signs. And keep going. Signs? Who would have thought of putting up signs? <laughs> hey, Dave, do you have a GPS? Yeah, you want me to pack it? Yeah. Just in case. Cell phones don't count. No, no, no. Dave, you need video of you using a GPS. We're going to make a tutorial. We're going to give a tutorial! <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. How the fuck am I going to pack this GPS? Oh, I, oh this was the third one. Hang on. Give me a few minutes. i got to pack it. Okay. Brennan, are you doing wrapping anymore? Because if not, I'm going to do earrings. Go ahead and do earrings. Oh, sorry, was that me being angry? I'm going to do something else here in a couple of minutes. What you going to do? I don't know. This one's loud. I'll do something. Just give me a couple minutes. I'm spending quality time with Odin. He is now left. So basically, you just have no excuse. No. My excuse is I'm just lounging now. Well, I'm going to go crash for a bit. Alright, man. And wait till Dave gets back, then I'll crash. So are you guys all going to be offline for the next, like, four days? Unless they're here. Um, I might be on... I'll probably be online tomorrow, but other than that, probably not. Well, if I don't get a chance to see it, have a safe and fun powwow, eh? Thank you. Thank you. Help. Next year, I'll try to be there. Woo! Meet you guys in person. Well, that, dep that depends how the, how the uh, end of the world wedding goes. I mean, that. Uh, Why didn't you close it up? Because I would actually kind of suck. That would actually kind of suck if the world ended at the what though. Would... We'll stop it from happening. Stubborn girl. Well, why not make your last day the best day of your life, eh? Exactly. Supposedly, it's a beginning to the end, so who knows? We might cause it. <laughs> hold on, hold on. We're not ready yet. Give us another year or two. Yeah. yeah, apparently there's just a whole shitload of tornadoes with the storm front coming through. This one wipes out the other DC that we get our product out of. Nice. Who knows? <laughs> Brennan, 
Ryan, do we need groceries? Probably. I'm going to clean the kitchen tomorrow. Okay. Well, Saturn, you guys can worry about it when you get here. I picked up milk and eggs. <laughs> Everything's going to be so chaotic, like, I probably will have no clue what is in my fridge until tomorrow. You normally don't have any clue what's in the fridge anyways. Nope. There's normally something creeping around in the back. It starts to creep. Throw it out. But what if it starts to speak to you? What if then it's reciting it Shakespearean? That's when you sell it. What if it. it's reciting the Shakespearean sonnets to you? Then you punch it in the face and then throw it out. What you let it for reading your books. Fuck, and you get that creepy ass thing out of your house. Someone will go by it. Um. Or train it to kill. I like that. That works too. <coughs> this is always a pleasant option. I think they've made plenty of horror movies out of that. Normally it turns badly and attacks its owner or whatever you want to call it. Depends on the owner. That's my story. Brandon is sleeping. Yeah, I have been all sorts of whooped today. Hmm. Well, I think y'all have power on the brain, so we'll say goodbye. All Take right. it easy. Night, night. Night, night, night. y'all. Have a safe night. time and uh, talk to you guys on Tuesday, right? Yep. 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 Bye. 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 I'm going to go lay down for a bit. Okay. All right, man. Get some rest. Night, night. 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 I guess everybody else is pretty much leaving. So. Brennan's here. Amber's. I can just holler at her. Dave disappeared. Maria, are you still here somewhere, maybe? I'm still here, shopping. Okay. You just was very quiet for a long period of time, so I didn't know if you were still around. I'm trying to find statues. Ah. And we haven't heard from Saturn for a long time, so I guess he's there, but not. Yes, sir. I think I'm going to end this and give Gregory Rice a quick shout. Okay. I'm doing lo- Oh, missed him. I was just going to say I'm doing laundry and packing. I can't really stay within cord's length of the computer for more than two minutes at a time. Yeah, that's okay. I understand. I'm taking a little break now, though. I need to figure out what I'm doing. I have to find some space on my bed so I could sleep tonight. Hmm. Found something close. Except it's five hundred dollars. Buy it now. You never buy it now. It's always a rip off. Very few items reach what they consider the price they're looking for. Edo period wooden sculpture.
tiny, tiny sculpture. Mm, not what I'm looking for. Ah, sad face. I wonder if that staff is still alive. Hmm? Uh, back when I still lived out in Vandegrift, my dad made a Satan staff. Hmm. It, it's been exposed to the elements for a while, but I think a lot of the core was metal, so I don't know if it's rotted away or not. I don't really want to look. But now that I'm thinking about it, I might have to. Hmm. Roar, roar, roar. I guess I'll just have to wait and see if I find a pair. It's so nice to be back on my anti-anxiety meds. Yeah. Go in there. Go in, dude. Hey, there's a star. Mm-hmm. I wonder if she's out of the basement. Mm. Mm. She's been coming and going all night. My, um... My mom gave me some extra money, and she said that she could use a fairly strong dream catcher. If I see one that's not too expensive. She's been having a lot of night terrors. Lovely. Yeah. Well, there will be a shitload of them. I figure. I don't think Chris does any. I know Raccoon does some, but I... Raccoons are not my favorite. Woo! I repacked my uh, chicken bag because, well, there's going to be a little too much stuff in it. Uh, yeah. That's why my bed is covered in stuff. <laughs> I have to keep taking stuff out and putting stuff back in because I can't get the suitcase to close. What are you doing, Brandon? Which one? The other Brandon. Okay. Well, I told you to take ibuprofen earlier. It's, it's right here. Lure him close to you and then grab the point just below the crook of the elbow and squeeze really hard. Oh, I know that point. It hurts like a son of a bitch, so you'll have to trick him into getting near you, but... <laughs> <laughs> it does work. That it does, that it does. Come on, feathers, do what I want. <laughs> Not that hard. But we want to be over like this. We don't want that. 
we want you to turn the metal and we just want to spin around. Bastards. Hmm. Yay, I found my 3G card. Yay! The internet at the airport. Woo! Yeah. Yeah, I figured I'd bring along my external hard drive and laptop. And then we'd pretty much have any kind of music or any movie to watch or listen to on the trip. Sadly, I have to buy a new hard drive. You made before? I filled up this one already. Ah. Uh. It took me, like, less than four months to use up two terabytes. I think I have a problem. Yeah. I think maybe. (laughs) (laughs) That way. No, that's not the way. <laughs> this is going to be my first time traveling on airline miles, so I hope I don't get the shit bumped out of me. And hopefully I get there on time. <laughs> oh, I, I think that's why Scurvy was saying, so you need picked up at 2. <laughs> <laughs> I originally told him 3.30 because I didn't have a clue. Yeah. Uh, it's 1 o'clock. I will be arriving at 2.55. <laughs> hopefully. Megan, you guys will be getting here god awful early Friday morning. Yep. Well, you don't have to worry about me showing up at the door. More than likely, I will be deeply, deeply unconscious. On the bright side, you're only you're only arriving like five miles away from where I'm landing. Yeah, and it's a mall, yeah. so if I have to wait for you guys. Yeah, I will be that. perfectly happy. <laughs> hey, I don't have your cell number. Do you have uh, a cell number? Of course. What is this? The Stone Age? Of course I have a cell phone number. Scurvy does it. I like to make fun of him for that. Yeah, whatever he told me I'd, he'd give me his brother's number, I was like, wait, why? <laughs> You you can't mean you don't have a phone. <laughs> right. Myself. There we go. Alright, it is seven... You can just type it, silly. You can just type it. We are broadcasting still. Okay. Wait. <sighs> Why do I get the feeling that's wrong? Um, I could write the one that I have for you. That would probably be better, because I think I, when I tried to remember mine to put it in so I'd have it, I think I transposed some numbers. I'm fairly certain my area code is not 742. <laughs> Yeah, oh, you were trying to read, like, 412. No, I'm pretty sure it's 724. But, uh... Why would you put two airports across the river from each other? Oh, because one's an army depot. Well, that makes more sense. Seven two four four seven two. Yeah, so I totally had the first six numbers screwed up. <laughs> Figured just in case, and here was mine. Ooh, I guess I should put the dashes in there. Nah, it doesn't matter.
And I'm gonna ignore all of this. Hey, it's Google Voice number. If, if I don't like you, I could just block you. <laughs> Aw, Dave doesn't like me. <laughs> And if we're lucky, we might we might run into Silver Ravenwolf. <laughs> Thanks, Garp is gonna kill you. <laughs> hey, I think we would be lucky if we ran into her. Hey, we have, have all the recording equipment and everything on a spot fight of you, dude. A skit. <laughs> You guys with wanted See, posters exactly, tracking her down. This is the future of PCP skits. We actually get the people we're making fun of on the skit. <laughs> I wasn't planning to make fun of her, and I wouldn't allow you to film what I would do. Oh, okay. <laughs> <sighs> you know, you know, Miles did have when he brought up about meeting her, and I have had a lot of people say that when you meet her, she's awesome. But I still don't care. Yeah, but she's still a money whore. Oh, well, y you can still be a person with a great personality and be a money-grubbing, you know, like, opportunistic piece of shit. She's a money whore. She started out with decent, like, one or two decent books, and then she wound up start writing crap to make money. And she has twisted so many people because of it. Because I they don't even mind her teaching so much as much as her method of teaching of hiding kids from their hi, having kids hide stuff from their parents. That's bad juju. Mm-hmm. Oh, damn you. You just had to say it, didn't you? Juju? Mm-hmm. Juju means. Uh... Mm -hmm. We're Jews! We're Jews in space! <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wait. is that? It's from Ice Age. So weird. It's the little mini sloths. And they start worshipping Sid. And then, like, their idol falls over and bursts into flames. And one of them screams, Bad Juju! Aww. It's awesome. That's kind of horrible. Yep, it's my favorite part of the whole movie. Like, they do this whole, like, chanty song. It's awesome. Damn you, Feathers! Do what I say! And they're just no little... Remember, it's too late at night! <laughs> Damn you, Dave. Do I have that? There's talk, it's too late at night. Where is it? Where is it? Yes, I do have it. I have to actually play the scene now. I'll mute, but I have to watch the little mini sloth dance. Mm. I'm going to have to find a Silver Raven Wolf book one these days to read. Barbara has them. I'm sure I can just get them off of her. Mm. No, don't do that. Bad feathers.
I need a more work than the other ones. Fuck this shit. You know what? I just had a thought. You remember um the broomsticks from Fantasia? Yes. Now imagine that with feathers and amber. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be really fun. That would be amazing, and you'd have a lot of feathers. I would, and they would all be doing things they weren't supposed to be. <laughs> I'm still kind of confused how we still have like ten people watching. People I don't are know. bored. Maybe they just forgot the maybe the show they just fell asleep or something. <laughs> or like their circus game. I still like the fact that the first time that, that Sam mentioned that on the podcast, I did put carnival music in. <laughs> nice. I don't even remember what episode it was, but it was in there. Epic win. Mm hmm. Too racist. Let's see, what else do I have? <laughs> Hey, Fritz. Meow. Meow. I'm not explaining it. It's too much explanation. I have returned. Woo! Welcome back. I had to get the bad juju out of my system. It's just so cute as they sacrifice another sloth to the lava. <laughs> I'm sorry, that all of a sudden reminded me of when um, I was watching, what was it, uh, Silent Hill. The little girl ends up dancing in a shower of blood, and I was like, oh, look, it's so cute! Wasn't it, though? I loved that movie. At least the ending. Mm. I like the games better. But that's me. I've never played the game, so... I don't have a reference. Mm. I can't play any games where you don't have peripheral vision. Like, mm. the, the Metroid games? I think they're really cool. And I like to watch people play them. But I have anxiety attacks when I play them. Because shit attacks you and you can't see it. Yeah, this is just a bad camera. Intentionally bad camera. I understand you're seeing everything from her point of view through her helmet screen, but... Yeah, but it's so much better like when you get the Wii controller so you can actually, you know, turn quickly. Yeah. I stick to my Final Fantasy games, and likewise. Hmm. I've only finished two Final Fantasy games. I've probably finished two Final Fantasy games 80 or 90 times. Mm. The, rest, the, the rest of them maybe 30 or 40 times. Of course, I haven't done 11 yet. One of my friends gave it to me because he didn't like it. Yeah, the PC one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. People lose lives on that. Yeah. Sooner or later, I'll get around to trying it. And I haven't done 13 yet just because I refuse to spend, like, $700 on a system. Although I'm tempted to get an Xbox 360 just for the Fable games, which it pisses me off that they didn't make PC versions of the last two. 
I mean, it's they. It was developed by a PC company. That's weird. Yeah, I'm not really, I suppose. Hmm. And Maria, it's not weird that I named my, my mouse food before, or the mic, the snake food before I give it to her. No, it's not weird. I just wasn't surprised that Brandon was terrified, mortified, uh. horrified, glorified, and fantastic in bed. I too mu- way too much information for me. <laughs> hmm. Only Final Fantasy games I finished, though, were um, number one and Tactics. Oh, so they weren't even, like, the really long ones. Hmm. I almost finished 4 and 5, but then I kind of, meh, well, petered se- out on them. 7 through 13, you can't really get 100% completion without hitting at least 100 hours of game time. At least not the first time through. 7, I can get 100% completion in, like, 60 hours now. That's but that's because... So- hmm? So that's still kind of insane. Yeah, but there's a lot more story than just, you know, attack, use an item, attack, use an item. Hell, 12, practically the entire game was CGI. Every single time you went from one area to the next, it was a movie. Everyone hates 13, because it's more of a love story. Damn, love stories get in the way of my killing thing. Well, the funny thing is, is the love story revolves around the fact that, like, the girl that's the main character is basically switched sides to the enemy because she thinks the people that the good guys are killing are actually the good guys. So it's, you know, the whole star-crossed lover thing because she's murdering the quote-unquote good guys while the good guys are murdering the good guys. I don't know. I, I, li- I kind of like love stories when they're not so obvious, like Red versus Blue. Yeah. It's a very subtle love story. See, I don't consider those love stories, but I like them. Why? What's, what is more of a love story than loving someone so much that when you make an artificial intelligence of yourself, the first thing that pops out is that woman? Yeah. Um, I think that goes a little beyond love into something scary. (laughs) (laughs) You never said it was perfect, all right? (laughs) I don't know. My favorite, well, what used to be my favorite was Eight. And it, it, it had the whole love story elements to it here and there. Like... The girl that was annoying and not really very useful was ca- caught between her ex, who was the crazy psycho that was your, like, nemesis, and you. I thought that was kind of cool. You know what disappointed me with 8? The reason I never finished it? Hmm. They weren't particularly clear on the one quest, so I spent hours trying to figure out what I was supposed to do. And my seed rank went from perfect to dead. <laughs> well, what, what was the quest? I don't remember. I just ended up wandering around a world map for like hours trying to figure out what I was supposed to be doing. I bet you were trying to find the Eslar city. There, there's only one entrance on the entire map, and the rest of the city is blocked off by mountains. 
So you have to fly around over and over and over going into every single little nook and cranny of the continent. No, it wasn't that one. It was, um, there was a little side path you had to go down after you set off a bunch of, um, triggers. And I never could find the triggers. So it took me forever to find them. So, that sucked. The quest was to go to the corner store and buy some milk. <laughs> Literally, it was, yeah. And some headlight fluid. I'm actually not sure what part you're talking about. Bum, bum, bum. It was a weird one. I ended up just going to the robbers and killed my rank, though. Well, you can fix that by taking the tests in the menu. Yeah, and then I kind of buggered up another one, and it's like, Haha, your seed ring fell again. It's like, well, poo. All that does is affect how much money you make. <laughs> yeah. I kind of blitzcrag through the game, though, so I had, like, no money. Because <laughs> yeah. that's how I play through RPGs. I just blitzcrag through. Otherwise, I'll never finish them. Well, you have to dungeon crawl some. Like... Final Fantasy games are meant to take time. You don't even want to hear my Final Fantasy 1 run. I did the um, volcano before I did the ice cave, so I did them out of order. So I had grinded so much on the volcano that I basically just went straight through volcano, ice cave, chaos. One, just one shot. Wait, which game? Final Fantasy 1. The first one. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, well, that one wasn't very clear. They don't really give you much to go on on what you're supposed to do. Oh, I was clear. I just kind of went in the wrong order. If I went through the game again, I'd do it exactly the same. Because that volcano is like 15 floors deep. And you have to get to the bomb in one shot. Mm. Oh, I hate that. There's a uh, side quest dungeon in Final Fantasy VIII that has like 60 or 80 floors or something like that. And you have to make it to the bottom or else you have to start over. And everything in there is like hard to kill even if you max out your levels. It's not cool. I want to play I Want to Be the Guy again. Crap. Mm -hmm. I want to be the guy. That's what I said. And then I stole his cape. <laughs> Do you believe in love? I believe in cookies. Is that close? Now I want to sing Cher. Crap. Oh, God, get off the line. <laughs> <laughs> wow, why, what is it with gay people and share? I like I, one song. I, I don't know what the thing is. It drives me insane. For black people and menthols. I mean, there is no explanation. Hey, I smoke menthols. White people can smoke menthols, too. Into us. They don't card you at this convenience store to make sure you're black before they give you menthols. <laughs> yes, they do, Dave. Just not in Texas, all right? <laughs> you don't know. Since Capes was brought up, it may... <laughs> Earlier, whenever we were talking about Scurvy's lack of cell phone. Oh my god, Amber, I'm echoing so bad off your line. <laughs> hey, no more echo. But, um, yeah, whatever we were talking about, Scurvy's lack of phone, whenever they did, um, the Final Fantasy movie, Advent Children, oh, yeah, the, like the, the little girl, uh, Whenever they're in the forest of glowing trees, and the little girl runs to Vincent because she thinks Cloud's being a douche, and she 
asks to use his phone and he shows he doesn't have one and she just goes you don't have a phone and she's like six (laughs) that just popped in my head whenever we were talking about scurvy's lack of phone just because it was like several years ago and it was a little girl saying it it's so unnatural that amazes me. I have a phone. That's pathetic. Mind you, it's a $19 phone, but hey, it works. No, what part is pathetic? The part that you have a phone or the part that even you have a phone and Scurvy does not? Even I have a phone and I don't call anyone. Yeah, neither do I. I don't have anyone to call. I'm afraid. I just use all the nifty apps. Yes, even though I use a total of, like, 20 of my 300 minutes every month, and probably use about 50 texts a month, even though I have unlimited text and data, I still bought a $400 phone. (laughs) Mm -hmm. I have a $20 phone. Pay as you go. Yeah, mine's pay as you go, but it's a smartphone. Mm-hmm. I like I like having the uh, GPS and navigation and you know all, all the different apps like Grinder and Foursquare and Pandora and all that good stuff. Yeah, Pandora has been getting on my nerves recently though. Whenever they release like remixes of songs and like you know like Katy Perry did a song called ET. And then she recently redid it with um, Kanye West. Mm-hmm. And surprisingly, surprisingly, the new one is better. But Pandora doesn't have it available. Like, I have found no way to connect that song to any playlist, even when I search for it directly. It'll come up eventually. I don't know. It seems like it's Pan- Pandora's like slowly moving away from using mainstream like typical radio music. I mean, it's awesome that you're getting tons of cool new weird music that you don't normally hear, but sometimes I want to hear a top 40, damn it. <laughs> mm. And they don't have Lily Allen fuck you either. And that's one of my favorite songs to play while I'm at work. (laughs) (laughs) One of the other team leads, like, has nothing to do with me whatsoever. The other day, I got into work and clocked in three minutes late. And I went into the break room to put my lunch and my drink in the refrigerator and buy a soda because we have to have a closed container if we're going to be on the floor or in the back room or whatever. Mm-hmm. And while I'm doing that, the other team leader that has nothing to do with me or my team walks out and says to Matt, oh, he comes in five minutes late and is standing in the break room talking. So... Matt yells for me to get out of the break room and tells me how I need to be on the floor by the time I'm scheduled and to watch it. And it's like, one, three minutes early, three minutes late. Two, wasn't standing in there talking, was putting my lunch away. What business is it of yours, whether I'm late or not? You're not my manager. Fuck off. So for the rest of the day, I was singing, Fuck you, fuck you very, very much. Oh, you're in your, you and your antagonistic ways. Oh, I... Well, it didn't help that, like, you know, I told one of my coworkers about it, and apparently he had been in the next aisle over, and from that point on, every time he walks past where I am, he stares at me as he walks by. <laughs> And I'm like, what? What are you going to do? You're going to fire me from the job where I make like $200 a month? Go the fuck ahead. 
hope you find someone that works as hard as I do. Mm. <sighs> He's mm. just pissy because he got overlooked for a promotion. Gee, I wonder why. But yeah, I, I suggest any of you that smile whenever you're pissed off at someone, download the song Fuck You by Lily Allen. It'll make you grin every time. See if I can find it. Usually it's F asterisk 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 U. Found it. <laughs> 